Oh, it's action already? Where's the 10 minute singing over? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Board of Selectmen. Thank you for coming to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, March 11th. Um, I'd like to start with uh, Adam Chapter Lane was trapped in Atlanta today and was delayed on, in flight. He hopes to make it here. But we tingle with excitement because we have with us tonight the Deputy Town Manager. Would you all please welcome Mr. Andrew Flanagan. Andrew, very nice to see you. Andrew, we got a memo from your boss that was missing the second page. Could you explain why that wasn't uh, included there in our package? There seemed to be packet? some kind of collation issue in one of our offices. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you the full memo when it's on your desk. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. <laughs> okay, for approval, a consent agenda, which are the minutes of the meeting, February 25th and March 1st. Is there a motion? I, I move approval. Is there a second? Second. Uh, discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Uh, item number two, licenses and permits. Uh, can I start? Yeah. Item, uh, a request for a wine and malt license and common victuallers license for Fantastic <coughs> Thai Inc. And uh, doing business as Thai Moon. Uh, I hope Fantika. Sir, uh, Learned Counsel, yes, please come forward, sir. Hi, I'm Attorney Ed Fitzgerald. Hi, Ed. And I'm here with uh, Ms. Amy Cusano and Ms. Um, Pimamas Kamlu. Welcome. Right? And uh, so this is the application of Fantastic Thai to take over the Thai Moon restaurant. Um, these uh, individuals have, have been working at this, at this <coughs> some, for some time. Excuse me. They don't plan to make any significant changes to the restaurant, if you know the restaurant. Um, each of them has had some uh, experience in the food industry, as well as uh, serving alcohol. Uh, both of them uh, expect to go through the uh, TIPS program in the coming weeks, and all of their employees will be required to do that, that process. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have any questions. Uh, did they bring samples of the food or the alcohol? <laughs> we maybe taking orders. Good <laughs> <laughs> answer. Yeah. Um, yes, welcome to, is it Fankita? And Fantika, Tammy. Fantika, Tammy. Tammy. And, um, good luck on the venture. I just had a question um, in your application. You list your hours of operation, and I'm just curious what the hours are. You list eight hours, eight and a half, nine hours. I'm just wondering what your opening and closing times are. So basically, um, right now the hours we close on Monday, and then on on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, basically start from about 11:30 um, until 2:30, and close after lunch, and open again after 5 o'clock, until sometime 9 o'clock and sometime 9:30. Yes, it's, it depends on uh, it, during the weekend we open longer. But now, Friday, you have eight and a half hours. Do you open a half hour early or a half hour later? Ha close half hour later, later. Later. And then on Saturday and Sunday, you have nine hours. Do you close? Um, on Sunday, we close sooner. sooner. So we open it so sooner as and well. And Saturday, you close later? Later, yes. What, what's your latest close? What's your closing time on Saturday? Um, 9.30. That's perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. I just okay. look at those things. Sorry. Anybody else? Yeah, Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I regularly give this speech when 
people come for the alcohol license. And so um, I know we've got other licenses on the agenda, so hopefully they're listening so I don't have to, so I won't give it again. But uh, we take the, the legal drinking age very seriously. And uh, the last time we did a test, there were four restaurants in Arlington uh, that, that failed. I'm, I think yes. Tai Moon was one of them, but I might, but I might, it could be, all right, regardless. Regardless of whether, I apologize, if I, I, but regardless. Um, it's often a new employee who isn't trained um, and who makes a mistake, and it's really important that you don't fall into that, you know, mistake. And so there's all sorts of recommendations that our board has passed out in the past, including things like having a checklist that, uh, for opening and making sure that all your new employees are trained before they serve their first drink and things like that, because I wish you the best of luck and I really enjoy um, your food, but I also don't want to see you here again to talk about alcohol licenses, because if we're talking about alcohol licenses, it's rarely a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just Except when we're granting them, then it's a good I thing. I said rarely. Yeah. And can I just add to that and also to the other applicants, just historically, the four that failed, in each case scenario, a manager wasn't there. It was a new employee. And they didn't have established um, employee training protocols. So that, you know, not only when an employee came on, there never was a monthly meeting to say, okay, you're brand new. So not that that necessarily dictates you're going to serve, but it, I, it was curious to me as a court reporter, I always look in, as an attorney, what are the similar things? Th those conditions existed for those four brand new employees to serve. And thank you, Mr. Dunn, for remembering that. Could I have a motion, please? Yeah, I, yeah I, I move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Okay. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, thank you for choosing Arlington. Best of thank luck. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, attorney. Uh, item number three, it's a request for a wine and malt license and common victualers license. Nicholas Portillo, I hope. That is correct. Another learning council? Yes. Welcome. Thank you very much. Members of the board, my name is Jared Chrislip from the PICO Law Office um, at downtown. And I'm here joined by, I believe, by Nicholas Portillo. You said it correctly. Um, his sister. Maria. Excuse uh, me. Maria is the proposed manager of record for this transfer. Uh, a corporation to corporation transfer for ABCC purposes, an LLC to LLC transfer actually. Um, given the two entities on the, the deal. Um, it's very similar to the presentation that was just made in that it's uh, a new business entity taking over an existing operating licensed restaurant. To speak to some of your points and concerns that I can vouch for the clients that they were listening very carefully. Um, uh, one item that might be of interest is simply that Jose Landa Verde, uh, the third member of the LLC, um, is currently operating, he's working at the restaurant over there on Broadway right now. He's a current employee and a longtime employee. Um, so that helps to address some of the concerns about new ownership or new management. There'll be some consistency in that regard. Also, uh, Nicholas has extensive business ownership and operation experience running a, a successful business in East Boston. Um, I'm not sure if there's any particular items that you'd be interested in hearing us uh, discuss in addition to that, but rather is that straightforward. We have an assignment of lease set, ready to go, contingent simply on the ABCC approval after presuming an approval here. On the board, questions, comments, Mr. Kiro. I, I move approval subject to all conditions as set forth. Okay. Second. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, just one question, and um, some of this is the application doesn't lend itself to give all the information. And I raise this because it was a neighborhood issue when it first was addressed, and I appreciate that. Um, you all have been down there and are familiar with. I see that you have checked off outside the side and sign plan. Um, I don't know if that encompasses the outside seating agreement that we came to. I, I just want to bring it to your attention, and if you've been working there, then you're already aware of it, that when the board approved in certain locations, not just this, but um, some others throughout the town, but especially on this one where it's kind of in a family neighborhood and houses across the street and couple of houses down um, if you all are going to commit to the same agreement if are you going to do outside seating 
right? He's in, we, we, during the correct warm seasonal part of the time. I think right. it's warm weather, and then maybe I, maybe town council or, or the acting town manager could look at our application and see if we can expand that a little bit better because that's the only place it's referenced, and I don't know if that necessarily speaks to the point. I just wanted to bring to your attention, but if you work there, you're aware of it, that this board worked out because neighbors were very concerned. It was a little bumpy. I'm sorry, I'm waiting for my daughter-in-law to give birth. Um, this neighborhood, you know, really wasn't for it, and they came up with a plan that everybody agreed with. And it was especially it was around disability access as well as the serving of alcohol. Um, I think originally they said they wouldn't serve it outside. Um, so if you could just review that, and I'll make sure the board touches base with you all. But it's my understanding that you plan to do what you have been doing before. That's the simplest and most accurate way to That's fine. state it, I do believe. Then, yes, then, thank then you. I'm, I'm cool. Right. <laughs> thank you. Further discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, Mr. Kerr made the motion. Was there a second? Yes. Second, okay. So, move approval subject to all conditions as set forth uh, that are in the works and, and have already been done. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. All those opposed. Thank you. Thanks for choosing Arlington. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number four, request for transfer of issuance of stock, a new stockholder and change of manager, Mary Parent doing business as a Monotomy Beer and Wine. Learned Counsel Joseph Fahey. Uh, good evening. Uh, I represent uh, Mary Parent, and she's here just to uh, simply ask the town for the privilege to become the manager of Monotomy Beer and Wine as well as the co-owner. Uh, Mary's been basically employed there full time since the doors opened. Uh, I cannot think of a more seamless transition uh, that could take place than for her to uh, uh, basically become an owner. Uh, it is uh, proud to uh, represent uh, the establishment has an unblemished record of service in the town. I think we can count on that to continue. And uh, I think uh, it'll be a, a great thing for the town as well as for the business for her to uh, become the manager as well as a co-owner. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. second. Questions? This end, of course. Yep. Um, congratulations, Mary. Um, I've been in the establishment a few times, and I do want to say that um, I'd really like to highlight the community investment that you all, the Duggins and Bergstroms and yourself, have done. Um, not just your monthly newsletters. Um, they offer for local artists only. I was really impressed with this. Can display their artwork and sell it, and you don't take a commission or anything, which I think is amazing. Um, and I think your book. You'll take anybody's artwork. <laughs> Show me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> you can be in the beer a cooler, Mr. Brand new wait, wait, I'm changing my mind on it. Wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. And um, I know I was speaking with Neil um, a couple of weeks ago, and I think you're booked up until May or June. Yeah, I'm usually booked three to four months ahead. Of time. Yeah. And um, I, it's so many people in the art community. I was talking to Karen Dillon, who's a a high school we would love alumni. To get the word out there even more. Yeah, I've passed it on to yeah. ACA and everybody, and I think the only requirement is that you're an Arlington resident or Arlington affiliation. Local, yeah, Lo local, local, you know, or a good customer. Yeah. You know, yeah. in fact, yeah. we are coming up on a third person that's a double. That's going to be a double artist on the wall. Yeah. So, yeah. so, Mr. Curo, he's on the Tourism and Economic Development Committee. Um, um, I'll shoot you his email. You might want to send him sort of the info, and he can get it out to different people. Because I think and the chair thing. is right here, Ms. Ms. Olszewski. Is, is okay, right, right well here, then she's so. hearing. Well, he reads our weekly newsletters. Yeah. So I'll make sure you all hook, <laughs> connect and hook up because I think it's a fantastic. Besides ten other things you do, and other businesses do also. I'm not, but thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. No, I, I think I think Ms. Mahan stated it well. I just wanted to add on. I know that you also support a lot of the schools in town. Yes with, with um, some of the, the uh, programs, uh, with some revenue share and, and the uh, community card as well. So we appreciate that. And certainly I've gotten to know you from visiting the, yes. the, the store too and appreciate the customer service and the, the uh, great um, face and responsible way you run the business. Yeah, Mr. Dunn. Uh, so I just wanted to specifically say that of the three original all alcohol licenses that were issued by the town, mm -hmm. I think that uh, your establishment really represents what the voters were looking for. And I think that you guys have done a fantastic job of that. And, um, I, and so I wanted to, I, I'm, I fully support, I'm delighted that you're changing roles. And I think that um, I'm very excited about the, the, the business. Thanks. Thank you. David? No, all set. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mahan made the motion. Was there a second? Second. Second. 
Uh, I kid, because my artwork would look like I had spent a few hours in the shop first. <laughs> but my wife is an artist, actually. She has a display right yes. now, so I certainly yeah, will, will make sure. Yeah, she, does have, she does have some talent at that, and choosing husbands, and uh, <laughs> by Mary Kay. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon will not be addressing us. <laughs> Mary, thank you. Thank you. Attorney Fahey, thank you very much. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, thank thank you thank Attorney Fahey. And item number five, a request for a change of manager, wine and malt license, Jacrit Davanuart. Good evening, members of the uh, Board of Selectmen. I'm Attorney Jonathan White. I'm here on behalf of the company. Um, I serve a second role. I'm also the current uh, manager of the establishment. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we are simply looking to uh, remove myself as a director of the corporation and as a manager. And in my place, uh, the current president of the corporation uh, stepped into my shoes. Um, my client recently became an American citizen in July of 2012. That was one of the main reasons why we couldn't set up the establishment uh, with him holding the license initially. He uh, has done an excellent job with his business in the three years he's been in the town. Uh, he also has two other establishments, uh, both uh, one in Medford that currently has a beer and wine license and one in Newton that he's fortunate enough to be in the process of selling. Um, he has never had any problems in his establishment uh, during the times that I'm there serving my role when I'm not there and it's under his supervision. Uh, he understands all of the duties that are required of him and trains his staff accordingly. Board members, questions? Yes, Mr. Dunn. Did you hear my speech? Did you hear a speech over to the first person that was talking? Yes. yes. Okay, yes. good. We're three for three on restu uh, restaurants and liquor stores that I go through today, so I enjoy your, uh, the curry dumplings. My staff all the time is a check I do before the sale of beer and wine. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Mann. I'd like to second it, and I'd also like to congratulate you on getting your U.S. citizenship. My daughter-in-law is from Nepal. And I know what a costly and long experience that is, as well as I don't know if people born in America would pass the test as soon as you all have to do, because I've become aware of the questions um, through my daughter-in-law. So I congratulate you on doing that. Um, that shows a lot of perseverance and intelligence. And God bless you on that. And good luck in this business. Thank you so much. Thank you. OK, so uh, further comments, discussion? Uh, on, the, on the motion by Mr. Dunn and seconded by Mr. Mahan, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you very much for your business here in Arlington, and good luck to you. And again, congratulations, congratulations. on being a U.S. citizen. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your Thank you. Okay, traffic rules and, and order um, and other business, obviously. I, item six, an update by the Arlington Recycling Committee. Julie, I believe. Good evening. Um, I'm Julie Brazil. I'm one of the two co-chairs with Gordon Jameson, the Arlington Recycling Committee. We're here with several members. This is Ellen Calloway um, and some very special volunteers from the Brackett Elementary School um, who are going to come up later. Um, uh, we just want to share a few things about recycling in Arlington. Um, I'm going to stick to my written comments and notes pretty carefully um, and not ad lib and get off track because I have quite a few facts and figures. Um, the first, the bar chart um, shows there's been a dramatic drop in the amount of trash that we send to the incinerator. Um, the green uh, or the blue speckled line towards the end is our projection of the results for the end of the first year of the trash contract, so ending in July. And it's a very nice um, decrease from the previous year. Uh, I'm not going to get too hung up on charts and graphs, but I can report that recycling is up and yard waste is up, um, so that's good. Um, and so that means we're saving money by not burning things that shouldn't be in our trash and are easily picked up curbside every week. Uh, the next chart shows the major components of municipal waste. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm colorblind, but... <laughs> Uh, you reference green. It, it, that's oh, the green chart. I, I was wrong. It was just the blue speckled chart is their estimated uh, end of the year results. Okay, that, and then what's 50% diversion? I'm going to get to that. I'm sorry. Good timing on your question. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. Forgive me. Um, 
The next chart uh, shows the major components of municipal waste. The big red area is the trash that we burn, and we pay by the ton to burn it. Uh, recycling and yard waste are in blue and green, and we have a tiny sliver uh, for white goods or appliances. Uh, the, these amounts are tracked by weight and not by volume, so it's not the number of barrels of recycling or the bins out on the curb. Um, our goal as a community right now is to get the red section, the trash we burn, down to 50%, and that's just shown what it would look like um, there if we got to that 50% estimated. Um, the statistic uh, for, for this is often referred to as diversion. And that's the idea that we want to share this evening. Anything we keep out of trash barrels, anything we divert away from the incinerator, saves the town money. Um, so if you're looking at the bar graph um, from when we started uh, thinking about recycling in this way as a town, uh, we have reduced our trash by 38%. And if you add up all of the savings over that number of years, it's about $2 million. Um, Getting to this goal of 50% will mean a lot of people thinking about how they can contribute and will try some new things. Right now, people are composting kitchen waste, dropping off household items like toasters and lamps at DPW during office hours, or at our big Saturday collections uh, twice a year. Clothes and books can go in bins around town, and packing peanuts can go to stores that accept them for reuse. The committee is always exploring ideas, um, and one of the ones we're going to be looking at next is uh, if it's possible to organize a collection for large items like mattresses and sofas. Um, the logistics are complicated, but we're looking at it. Um, we know that elementary schools are working on lunchroom recycling, and I asked the volunteers from Bracket to come. They have an amazing group who are composting lunch waste and separating recyclable items out of their lunchroom trash. They have set up a system that diverts 75 pounds of waste away from the dumpster every day. And by weight, that means they are diverting about 85% of their lunchroom waste. Mm. Wow. Um, so we're really excited by their, uh, by their hard work. Um, the pilot program uh, is obviously successful, and other schools are exploring ideas and talking to them. And recycling in school lunchrooms across town is getting a boost. Um, and then we have a new idea that we want to try. The town's recycling coordinator uh, found a company that can recycle some kinds of styrofoam. We get a lot of questions about why the town's list of recyclable items doesn't include styrofoam when so many pieces of styrofoam that you see are marked with the number six symbol. The short answer is that our hauler develops the list of recyclable items based on the markets, and some products are hard to collect or hard to process or separate, and it's not cost effective. But new markets are created over time, and so we have found a styrofoam collection uh, company. So we're going to try collecting styrofoam in May at our community collection day. Uh, the list of items they can take is very specific, so we want everyone to check the website. Um, that information should be posted soon on the town website under recycling. Um, because uh, if you bring the wrong items, it contaminates the process too much. But we wanted to let everyone know that they can start collecting um, uh, recyclable styrofoam and just set aside a corner of your basement or front porch um, and we'll see if we can't fill up a dumpster on May 11th. Uh, finally, we have an, uh, the Town Eco Fest coming up in just a couple weeks, uh, March 23rd in Town Hall. Uh, there's lots of information on the website, but it is a great time to learn more about composting, which we fully support. Um, the town is working to preserve and showcase our open spaces and there'll be information about that concept of keeping your eco footprint small. So it should be a fun event. Um, and of course, everyone interested in recycling issues um, is welcome to poke around on the town's website. Um, there's a lot of information um, and we add to it from time to time if people have questions. So I just wanna say thanks to everyone in Arlington for all of your enthusiasm for recycling. Thank you. Yeah. So the, I don't know, 15, 20 Dunkin' Donuts styrofoam cups that yep. I use a week. Are they, are, does that count? I have to check the information. I think they are, but okay. some, some companies are and some yeah. companies aren't. I'm pretty okay. sure that those It are depends on, yes, it, right. it'll, that'll be there, and I'll be sure to send a follow-up email and clarify that, since you'll be an excellent source of styrofoam, yeah. Kevin. And then when I don't show up on Saturday, she'll be yelling at me, but uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's fine. <laughs>
Um, Maybe Miss Mahan will help. I, have, uh, I will. I've, I've been down there for Stinky Sneakers. And yes, that's name. right. <laughs> You're a big part of it. Um, uh, are there three people here from Brackett? Yes, stand up. Uh, God bless you. Um, <laughs> I, who sneezed, I mean. <laughs> God bless you, too. But um, first, I want to commend you on stepping to the forefront and initiating the program up at Brackett. Two of my three kids went there, and I have a little affinity to it. I was PTO president for five years. But I, in that vein, I would like to say to my colleagues at Brackett, um, if you could possibly explore, um, I also have an affiliation with the lab collaborative program. and. Lexington Lab, their older kids, their 16 to 22 kids, um, they, they had contacted me about they really wanted to get recycling um, places that, that recycle toners and the like. Mm -hmm. For them to get it and recycle it, it's like part of their job. They learn how to package it and send it. And so I hooked them, I connected them with the town manager and town hall, but I'm thinking, you know, the schools, elementary, middle, and high school, um, perhaps if you could. Um, contact um, whoever runs the lab program. It used to be John Pike. I don't think that that's the person anymore. There's a new special ed director I think they're interviewing for. So maybe if my <coughs> colleagues from Bracket could quarter, sort of explore that. And then um, the contact person up at lab is Tom Riley. And they're right out of Lexington High School. And he'll connect you with the person that runs that program for those kids. Because mm -hmm. it really helps them train for that kind of vocation. And I'm familiar with the program. Yeah, it's, okay. a, good, it's a great program. Yeah. yeah, and it may already be happening, but I don't see. It, it has in the past. I haven't been in the building, but yeah. Right. I so. haven't seen it at the high school or middle schools, but maybe, you yeah. know, I don't know if there's still town-wide PTO. If you still do that, maybe that yeah. could be. So, thank sure. you. Move receipt. Move receipt. Mr. Well, I'll second that. I have a couple of comments. So. Sure. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Th thank you, Julie, for the sure. for the great presentation, and and um, also Kim and the rest of the bracket folks from uh, for uh, what you're doing. I know my wife um, volunteers up at Stratton in the in the cafeteria a couple times a week, and I know that they've looked at the bracket example and have been starting to do this too. And she said that the the impact is just extraordinary. Yeah. The the amount of stuff that the the um, kids are recycling, the kids are getting it. They get it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give you an opportunity to give an extra pitch, though. You, you mentioned the Echo Fest. I yeah. know that my old my older daughter has been hard at work on her trash formations right. sculpture. If you wanted to give a pitch on, on that. I'm not very familiar with the details. I think it's a very fun idea. The uh, contestants are all submitting various forms of art. Um, and the DPW will be, um, staff will be um, judging and um, sending out awards. Um, and uh, so it, 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 so it's, I, art made out of recyclable items is the rule, right. and I think it's a lot of fun. Right. So, I don't understand. I can make art out of trash and maybe get it hung at, my, at the Monotony Liquor Store. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I, I love this. I'm I hesitate to, to agree with, with you, having not seen your work, uh, <laughs> Mr. Greeley, but you should hesitate. <laughs> In theory, <laughs> yes. You want to. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute, though. Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I, it's something else, too. Um, I, I know I ran into, Julie, I ran into you over the, over the weekend. I briefly mentioned uh, this. Um, I think you, you may know that um, we've been getting a lot of questions lately about litter. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, one of the issues that was brought, brought to us, we, we actually re referred over to the uh, Recycling Committee to take a look at, um, there was a question was raised uh, with us about um, the feasibility of having covered recycling bins because when the wind comes through, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we lose a lot of that recycling. It gets turned into litter, <laughs> which is not what we want. It's uh, the wrong direction. Um, but there was one other thing. We, we had a um, woman who I think was also a bracket parent. Um, Shocking. Ms. Ginz, uh, Kate, Maya. Maya, Maya yeah. She, she came in a few weeks ago and, and um, talked to us about litter. And we were brainstorming a little bit here. I know that the Recycling Committee does community collection days uh, twice a year. Mm -hmm. So you said May is the next May and one. November, yep. And I, I was thinking, and, and maybe the board can mull this over as well, that there may be an opportunity there for us uh, to potentially partner, partner and to encourage some of the community groups to, to run their cleanup days on that same day. So it's a community collection and cleanup day. Um, th oh. There's an actual, actual opportunity for. Mm -hmm. um, for folks who are doing the cleanups to, to bring things down to the DPW yard. I don't know if the, we could okay. maybe talk about that uh, yeah. more going forward, but um, I don't know if you have any thoughts about No, that's an interesting idea. Recycling at the parks, um, you know, <coughs> it's difficult, the, the logistics. Um, DPW <coughs> doesn't have the staff to um, 
to s collect and sort, and if you put two bins next to each other, you risk both of them being um, equally contaminated with trash and recycling. Um, <clears throat> so we have, a, I know that DPW, um, the recycling coordinator, has a pilot program at one park yeah. now to try some things, um, and <clears throat> the results of that will certainly inform um, any work that we do. Um, the recycling committee um, certainly, you know, follows if, if there's a way to get recycling in parks, which is part of the whole care and maintenance um, and would address hopefully some of the litter, um, at least in the, in the parks and, and public spaces. So right. we continue to work on it and we, we'll Yeah, and we've got a little bit of time, I guess, before the community collection day. Maybe we could yeah. uh, brainstorm a bit about what, whether or not there's a way to, to encourage some, some broader um, involvement. Thank you. Great. Um, my, my, uh, my wife, the artist I was talking about earlier, she's a teacher's aide up at Brackett. In the, for the kindergarten group, and she's talked about this uh, this program, um, so uh, she, she's um, reminded me about how I should be better at my recycling as well. We encourage you, Mr. Greeley. Yes, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> well, you know, I people who go through my trash and remind me. You should but, uh, you should get the kids to come sort it for you. They're very good now. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so on the mo on the motion for receipt by and and strong endorsement by uh, Mrs. Mahan and and uh, seconded by Mr. Kuro, uh, you know I'm always amazed what uh, you've been able to demonstrate. Re recycling saves us. A lot of people didn't like that we do force recycling right. now, but the results of which are the two million dollar savings that you uh, that that you you talked about and a, a, a really a trash contract that really. Uh, for 10 years at other communities uh, envy. So yes, absolutely. Thank you for all your excellent efforts. Very all those in favor of your seat, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And all those opposed. Thank you very much Thank for you. being here. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, look hey, who's look here. here. <laughs> <laughs> so we weren't going to let you slip in, Adam. <laughs> uh -huh. We're having too much fun so with Andrew. Andrew, before you go, I'm yeah. sorry that we did talk about the manager's evaluation. <laughs> Before he was able to get here, what were those points you were making about? Next time it goes away, we'll discuss it. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Have foiled the coup. <laughs> Adam, welcome back. Thank you. Have you been home, or did you li literally travel like this? Oh, I sleep in this. <laughs> like this. No, not a wrinkle. We're at item seven on the agenda: the Arlington Committee on Tourism and Ec Economic Development. I see Angela is with us, Mr. Kuro. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, we have, I'd, I'd like to introduce uh, Angelo, Angelo Olszewski, um, the chair. The chair. It's incorrectly noted on our um, um, uh, thing. Uh, Angela mentioned she said it would be lovely if she had a second person to uh, <laughs> help her with this, but she actually really uh, does a yeoman's job, uh, carrying a lot. Um, I think I mentioned when we were uh, interviewing for some of the latest vacancies that we seem to have more projects than people at times. Um, on uh, ATED, and uh, it seemed an opportune moment for um, uh, an update uh, from, from the chair on, on what the Tourism and Economic Development Committee has been doing. There are a lot of activities that are coming up in the next uh, couple of months, and uh, there are a few um, areas where I, I, I think we would like to uh, ask for the board's uh, s support um, as, as well. Um, so I'd like to turn it over to Angela, and then uh, maybe I'll be happy to fill in if uh, need be. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so as Joe mentioned, we have a lot going on right now. And um, we do have a couple of warrant articles. Um, we have one in the special town meeting and one in the annual. Um, the one in the annual is uh, for the manufacture and installation of the directional signage that was approved last year. The design was approved last year at town meeting. And um, the procurement process took a little longer than we expected, but we are going to be uh, working now with the, um, the designer to get those all set and then we're asking for the money this year so that we when we're ready we can manufacture those um, the article in the special town meeting is for a visitor information booth and if you remember I came back I came before you and asked for permission to put up our tent for a couple weekends in the fall and we did that and we thought that was a really good experiment and we liked being out there and talking to people and giving them information about town so we decided that one of our projects this year would be to try to put a semi-permanent visitor information booth um, near the Uncle Sam statue um, so we've asked for funds for that um, we also have coming up, um, 
this summer, July 13th, we are having an Arlington, um, Arlington Alive Arts Festival, we're calling it, and the town's been involved in that. We've a whole bunch of groups working on that. Uh, we received a grant from the Cultural Council, um, and we're working with the Center for the Arts and, and all of that. Um, so that's in the process right now. That's going to be a street fair kind of thing. Um, also, big coming up right now, and we're going to ask you to do a proclamation, is Patriots Day weekend, and we want to celebrate monotony. So I just want to give you a few highlights of things that are be go going on in the weekend. Uh, we're trying to be the coordinating force for all of this. It's kind of like the parade committee does the parade, and the Historical Society has things at the Jason Russell House, but we're trying to pull everything together so that it's a cohesive weekend and everybody knows that there's things going on. We're hopeful that there's going to be bunting on some of the businesses on Mass Ave. Um, Bob Bose has been working on that, and he definitely has interest. So we're looking at that probably for the beginning of that week. Um, something else that's going on right now, we're just kicking this off, is um, something called Mention Monotomy, where we're inviting the business community to participate also and offer some kinds of discounts or deals that weekend to customers who come in and mention Monotomy. Um, and we also are talking about all of the events and leading up to the Lancers ride and everything um, on our Twitter feed, which is, if you can follow us on Twitter, it's at Greet Riders, Monotomy is waiting. And we do have a website finally too, so we're starting to post events up there, that's ArlingtonMA.org. So you know on Saturday of that weekend, the Jason Russell House will be open from um, 1 to 4, and there's going to be, weather permitting, children's activities on the lawn and refreshments. There'll be tours, and the Monotomy Minutemen will be there. Um, they were, we were also um, happy to find out at the Historical Society, we had the house dated, and we found out that um, while the main part of the house was built as expected, um, the rafters, many of the rafters in the inside frame, actually we believe came from um, Grandpa Jason Russell's house, and they date back to about 1640, so we're celebrating with a housewarming. Um, on Sunday we have the parade, that starts at 2, and the Jason Russell House will be open for tours from noon to 4. And then Monday morning, the Minutemen will be doing um, their traditional flag raising and burying ground ceremonies. So it starts at 7.15. Lexington is not the only town that gets up early in the morning on Patriots Day. So um, come down and join them. It's nice. I did it last year, and they march back over from the Jason Russell House to the old burying ground playing music. And everybody who doesn't know about it pulls over in their cars and watches. But it's a nice way to honor those who lost their lives that day here. Um, it's very important. And then we'll be doing our event again, which is, we call it the Monotomy Welcoming Committee, and that's where we greet Paul Revere and William Dawes, and that was really successful. I know, Kevin, you were there last year. I forget who else came. But we had, we think, at least 100 people down there, and we had crafts for the kids. Diane Taraz is going to be um, performing again, and um, we're going to be sponsored by Bose Real Estate again, too. So. And Andrew, we, Jimmy, are they going to do that thing where they... We're able to watch where Paul Revere was, like on a map or something on the on Yes, the that's map. what we do on the Twitter feed that day. Yeah, that cool. <clears throat> we actually have people tweeting along the way. So for example, we knew when Paul Revere was in Medford, yeah. so we had an idea of when he was coming. And we're getting more followers. So hopefully we will have even better, you know, intelligence along the route. We had people over in like Somerville or something, who were seeing William Dawes, but they thought it was Paul Revere, you know, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I, and I, I'm not sure whether it'll be William Dawes or Paul Revere this year. Do we know uh, which it will be? Or? We get both of them. Yeah. I think William Dawes is a scheduled stop, but Paul Revere always stops too. So as far as I know, we'll get both of them. And, and, and actually, you're, you're going to be reading, right? We have yes, you reading this uh, year. Yes, my children and you shall hear. Yes. <laughs> you poor souls, uh, me reading a poem. Um, but Dawes did this great poem out in front of Town Hall last yeah, year. Yeah, but, yeah. I think uh, we, yeah, yeah think maybe you can, if you can read that one too, and we were even <coughs> saying too, because maybe we can get the kids to sort of chant the refrain, which I think is something like, and his name is, Re my name is Dawes, and his yeah. is Revere or something. Yeah, right, right. yeah, that'd be great. It's your whereas thing that you uh -huh. like. <laughs> yes. But it, it was, you know, in my 24 years, that by far was the most lively welcoming of Paul Revere that I've ever mm -hmm. attended. It was, it was, Pretty cool. Thank you. Uh, thoughts, comments, Joe? Something else? Well, I think we all had emotions, or well, we all had. Yeah, the, the, I, I would like at least one or one or two. Um, I think we all had in our in our uh, packets a copy of the proclamation, um, 
which uh, was requested by by ATED. Um, we, we have a, a, a proclamation. Should we read it or should we? Go ahead. Right okay. Sure. It, it, it's fairly short. <clears throat> whereas in 1775, Arlington was known as Monotomy, and whereas on the eve of the American Revolution, Paul Revere and William Dawes rode through Monotomy, warning the residents that the British regulars were out, and whereas Minutemen and militia from Monotomy and surrounding communities gathered in our town and prepared to meet the regulars in battle on their retreat to Boston, and whereas on April 19, 1775, the fiercest fighting of the day occurred on the plains of Monotomy and 12 patriots, including residents Jason Russell, Jason Winship, and J Jabez Wyman lost their lives. And whereas each year on Patriots Day weekend, Arlington celebrates its history with numerous community events, highlighted a parade which is one of the largest of its kind in the nation. And whereas the people of Arlington have shown a commitment to spreading the word regarding our historic heritage and assuming our rightful place alongside our neighboring communities and the hearts and minds of American patriots, now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, do hereby proudly proclaim that Arlington shall once again be known as Monotomy from April 13th through April 15th, 2013, in honor of the important role that our residents played on the first day of the American Revolution, and that we urge the residents of our town to celebrate and pay fitting observance of this solemn occasion. And I would move, I would move adoption of the proclamation. I'll look, uh, Ms. Mahan. Um, if I could, and I, I'm sure Mr. Carol, Joe, Ms. Elzowski, Angela are working on this, um, but whatever, nope, sorry, whatever the town can do in terms of, I know Mr. Greeley cited there was a great attendance last year. I started posting it on five lists, which, you know, are very well versed, including a parents list. And it is on the town website, but I don't know, it might be too late, but if there's any way we can either a couple days before the parade and or during have somewhere in an appropriate fashion if it's available, the LED um, announcement board that kind of lists our events and activities, because a lot of people don't know that, you know, at 12 o'clock this happens, and or I don't know if we can get, I know out front is advertised an event, I think March 23rd and 24th, maybe we can get something that, again, lists the Sunday and Monday activities, because so many people say, and, and the town website, congrats to Joan Roman, is very well used, but I know that, um, you know, there's a lot of people who are not reaching that when they hear about it afterwards, they say, oh, and the best thing is last year, word of mouth. You know those hundred people probably told at least two or three people. So, and it may be too late for this year to get something out on the sandwich boards, um, maybe next year, but um, I'm going to leave it to Ms. Carroll, Ms. Ozulski, and the town manager to see if there's any other way we can get um, sort of a listing of the events for people who aren't on the town website all the time and don't get bothered by emails from me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh let me ask another question. The, uh, there was like a poster contest for the kids last year, right? To, for them to make posters to hold up when Paul Revere and William Dawes came along. Yeah. Was, yeah. Am I right? Was um, something like they that? made posters. We didn't have a contest, but they oh. did make posters. Okay. Yes. And yep. could bring the posters. Yeah, we're going to do that again. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea, though. We could, ha we could have a contest, actually. We hadn't, hadn't thought of that. Again. It, can adults uh, submit <laughs> posters? <laughs> um, but maybe we'll read this proclamation that day too. Do you remember we did one at Stratton you bet. to get the kids involved yep. with doing the whereases? They really, <clears throat> they, they, they get into it. But anything else? Well, if we could vote it, then I have one other thing I just uh, wanted to ask. If we could you. vote it, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. so Kevin, do your job. All those in, that was on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by. Mr. Dunn? Mr. Dunn, I think. Mr. Dunn, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. We shall be monotony from April 13th through the 15th. Thank you. Okay, something Thank you. <laughs> the other thing that I, that, um, I think Ms. Olszewski mentioned, there are two um, warrant articles that were submitted by the, um, the ATED, one specifically pertaining to um, historic signs, it's uh, 44, and then one um, uh, pertaining to the visitor center, which is three on the special. These are actually FinCom articles. FinCom has heard them and they're, they're considering them for the appropriation amount. I didn't know if there was precedent for the board to, to um, endorse articles in concept though, especially uh, on the visitor center. That involves land that is under our control, so we will have to actually pass off on, on the project ultimately uh, regardless. Um, I don't know if that needs to be posted as an actual warrant article hearing for the board to en endorse when we're not the reporting. Learning council? Did you hear the question? Do I you know? prefer it. Yeah, if sure. it's not on the agenda. Prefer it. That makes sense. Okay. I'd prefer I, and could it. I, 
that we posted that we, if the board was going to take a position. Okay. That makes sense. Because I have no trouble taking a position on it, but I agree that yeah. Mr. Dunn. Um, if you're going to ask me to support spending money, I need backup. You got it. All right. Uh, to that point, um, could we post our hearing and endorsement of it after FinCom has um, voted on it? Yeah, so that we can makes have sense. That. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I would like. Just like we're doing that with the retirement compensation. and. Okay. Anything else? We'll come Mr. back around on that. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Kerr? No, that's it. Okay. I'll sign Yeah, and I only say that because the main motion is FinCom, and I don't want them taking any sort of unfounded intention that we're voting yeah. on something that it's their baby, and you know, so that's Makes why. perfect Thank sense. You. Okay. okay. Thank you, Angela. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Mm -hmm. um, uh, next is correspondence received, um, and I just want to bring up one thing on the agenda, Marie. I think this is my fault. But correspondence should go back to the end of the agenda. It was that night there was someone here on one of the, that I wished I'd taken it out of order, but I didn't mean to <coughs> hint to tell you that, sorry. So thank you for being responsive to me. But I think that correspondence normally should, but if someone's here for it, I'm more than glad to take it out of order so they don't have to stay through the rest of the night. So that said, on correspondence received, Mr. Dunn. Um, Mr. Chairman, I have already informed the town manager and the board administrator that I need to recuse myself from any discussion of the water on Alpine Street because those are my immediate neighbors. So I'm taking this opportunity to inform my colleagues that uh, I will not participate in any discussion or votes or anything related to that particular issue. Okay. Do you want to make a motion to move receipt on the uh, Bob Valeri, 7 Wheaton Road, and Christopher Amanajan correspondence? And then I we'll so vote. move. I'll second that. Okay. Um, oh. And if I just, oh. yep. sorry, could be briefly um, say, could we refer the um, request for speed bump on North Union Street to TAC to get in the queue? And also um, on the Master Road Scholar for Daniel Warren, Dan Warren, um, I want to commend him on that. We have some uh, correspondence in here that indicates he's a uh, Master Road Scholar. He attended a minimum of 22 training se sessions which included snow and ice operation and it lists other things. And I do want to say, as a result of this very active winter we've had, quite a few people have emailed me. Somebody, some people say we're not doing it so well, but quite a few, at least 20, 30, emailed me and people have stopped me in the street and said, boy, what a difference from so seven to nine years ago when um, Mr. Hurd was the chair of the committee, Snow and Ice, and I sat on as vice chair, and we really tried to tackle um, and I, I, you know, I'll bring it up under new, well, I'll say now, I'd like, when appropriate, when Mr. Rademacher, Mr. Chapdelaine, and Mr. Warren think appropriate that the season's wrapped up, we just have that one snow and ice committee, because that really got us into, nothing's perfect, and, you know, it was a blizzard, but quite a few people said, boy, what a difference from seven or eight years ago. And congratulations to Mr. Warren on completing that. Mr. Kira. Yeah, and to, to that end, I'd just note that in our packets, I think about a month ago, there was a very nice article about uh, Mr. Warren completing that in the um, Mass Interchange newsletter, which is from Bay State Roads, and I know that that's posted up on their uh, website. It's, uh, it gives a little bit more information, and uh, we're all very proud. Okay. Um, uh, am I right? Do we have a policy on speed bumps on public roadways? If we have any standing I don't believe there's any standing policy. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it has been requested before, and, and um, whoever the fire chief was at the time, I'm sorry I don't remember, uh, that was an issue in terms of uh, speed bumps on public ways. But anyhow, I agree with referring it to TAC, and let's see what they come back with. I just wasn't sure if there was some policy. Okay, so on those two, a uh, motion to receive and refer all those in, and, and congratulate Mr. Warren. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. I'd like to aye. move receipt of the Alpine Street correspondence. Second. And Adam, did you wish to comment on that Alpine Street and the water issue? Uh, well, only that uh, in the board's informational packet, there was a, a letter in response to the letter received from the, the residents on Alpine Street uh, that I. I <clears throat> copy the board on uh, for further explanation. Mm -hmm. and, and I think basically where this is a private way yeah. and it's a condition by a homeowner, the town, we can't really get involved. <coughs> that, that, we have no power. That's absolutely correct. Uh, it's a, a very legitimate issue raised by yes. uh, the residents on Alpine Street, but because it is a private way, there's very limited, if anything, the town can do to involve themselves in the issue. Thank you. Okay. So this is just a move receipt, please? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. From Ms. Mahoney. Second? Second. 
All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Any baby yet, Mrs. Mahan? Not yet, no. Is everybody sending funny comments about this meeting? No. About this meeting? <laughs> about what a fine job you're doing. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. And a request for artwork, but that's yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to read the artwork. All right, Warren article hearings. I don't know why we decided Mr. Dunn is to move off of Alpine Street. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is Article 9, grant of easements, Thompson School, see if the town will vote to grant permanent easements or other interests in certain land surrounding the Thompson School for the purpose of placing utility poles or take any action related thereto. Mr. Chapter Lane. Uh, so this uh, request was started uh, or was um, initiated by Verizon. Uh, and they need to locate utility poles for uh, getting power to the Thompson School. Um, <clears throat> I, I'll let uh, Town Council uh, elaborate. It was unclear to uh, us, uh, mm. through the research Town Council has performed, why, uh, why an easement was necessary, but Verizon is requesting it for the legal placing of the poles uh, to be able to supply power. So we are, we've advanced the warrant article, and I, I don't know if you want to uh, let Town Council add if there's anything further. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, um, and I apologize for paying attention to my phone. We're trying to handle the ARB meeting at the same time. Um, but uh, I, um, I think Mr. Champdelaine has explained. My understanding is that there were three utility poles that existed on, on uh, or butting the sidewalk, and with the new redesign of the Thompson School with uh, head-in parking, they've been moved back to um, the non-sidewalk portion of the town land. I don't know if the Verizon representative is here. I guess she is to explain the basis for the request. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Elizabeth Kelly. I'm at um, Precision Valley Communications, um, an authorized agent for Verizon. And uh, yes, we uh, have uh, requested an easement, permanent easement to be signed for the location of the poles. And I'm in receipt of a letter of consent from the Arlington Public Schools that they um, are aware and approve of our submission to the article for the easement to be brought to the annual town meeting. Okay. Mr. Dunn. So uh, town council pa sir, passed out a memo for us uh, in our packet. And she said that it, it, I, impl I gathered from the memo that ordinarily this would be done through something called the grant of location as opposed to an easement. Can you explain to me why this one it would be an easement as opposed we to? Only, no, grants of location is um, something that is done when we are asking for our facilities to be placed within a public way. Uh -huh. Thompson School is, a, is owned by the town, and we consider that a private property owned by the town or owned by a town board. So therefore, it, it, it wouldn't fall under the jurisdiction of Mass General Law 166, Chapter 22, which covers the grant to location, which technically <coughs> is um, utilities have the right to be in the public way, and the town boards are basically acting a rep as agents or representatives of the state just so that we can um, work with the town on the locations. But the actual grant to location, um, is a license and it's not permanent and the placement of our facilities uh, we look for the most permanent right we can get so when anywhere we anytime we're on a private property parcel we request an easement and that would be both companies both NSTAR and Verizon and in this case it's a J, uh, jointly owned poles and a joint easement in the names of both companies uh, so may I have sure, Ms. Uh, Ms. Rice yes are you are your questions that you posed in the memo satisfied or uh, I, I really still don't see the need for a permanent easement because um, a grant of location is a is a word for giving permission and the board gives permission for the placement of utilities on its property frequently do you think we should say yes or no if I get the question as to why is why is required by town meeting, I'm I'm still not going to be able to answer the question. So uh, I mean, the, so the board can certainly do you know what it what it chooses. Um, if the board you know were to recommend this and town meeting were to authorize it, were to come back to the board to grant the easement, it's certainly within the board's power to do that. But as Ms. Kelly points out, it's a permanent easement that will outlast the Thompson School, 
And um, I get asked, you know, a lot of times um, about undoing easements that have been granted in the past, and they're difficult to undo. They have to go back to town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. We, but we happen to have a moderator, Ms. Leone. Are you talking about this? No, no, I'm, do you have a feeling on this? Do you understand the, what we're discussing now, John? I, 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 um, Sorry. I was just explaining to Helmut the difference between easement, which is permanent, we never can give it up. It's up to Verizon to give it up. Okay. I don't understand the... Um, so, yeah, but so us long. going back to town meeting, if we have to take it back. All right. <coughs> yep, thank you, John. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I just, mm -hmm. Mr. Kiro. Yeah, so it sounds like, um, you know, the issue isn't just the permanence, it's also the expeditiousness. We could much more expeditiously issue a grant of location. Is that not, not true? Uh, that's correct, and my understanding is We won't accept a grant of location because that's not our procedures over many, many years, and neither company will set the poles on private property without a permanent right. I'm just so losing. it will delay I, 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 the project, and and I just want to add that, and it's certainly the purview of the board to make a recommendation, but in um, I'm currently um, going for a you know a, a, a applying for a license to another town, the town of Lincoln, for a project of an expansion of a town building, very same sit situation. We had to relocate, and the problem is that see. Our facilities, uh, as regulated companies, our facilities, are, we would have to pass on costs to relocate if we don't have the most permanent rights. When we have permanent rights in the future, we are taking action to be responsible about protecting our assets that we don't have to come back and then turn around and charge ratepayers for um, a change of use of a property. So, so uh, once we're there, then the secondary thing is certainly the use of the property can change, but when that owner comes, the secondary owner, next owner, comes then, uh, and wants something moved, we don't have to go out and, and automatically relocate at somebody's discretion and turn those costs over to ratepayers. So other poles in Arlington, those are all permanent easements? If they're on private property, they should be. I can't say that they are it, it is the first exactly. But I've, I've always said te know, temporary know. easement, and we have other problems. Well, I wonder whether our town should, council should speak with their council uh, on this further. Or, I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, that they won't do it, and I don't want to delay the project by any stretch. So where are we here? I mean, I, I'm very confused as to why this is considered private property. I mean, it's, it's public property, correct? It's school property. It's public property. The right. deed is not in the, in, in the name of the town. It's in the name of the school board, the school committee. Which is public, which is a public board. No, it's why don't, Yeah, why don't we investigate? I'm a former um, school committee member, yeah. ma'am. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a public board, and yeah. it's public Well, land. I understand it's a public board, but it's, uh, it's not considered um, um, public property. It's not for the use of everybody. All right. Well, why don't we... Like a street is. Thank you. This is the first I'm hearing of this. Normally, and we have one that was voted at the last meeting and tonight, it's a temporary easement. So why don't we do as the chairman suggested, have Ms. Rice contact, I'm, I'm blanking on your name, and or council to see if we can do what we've done in the past with municipal property, school, town, public, um, and if the temporary easement allows you to continue on. And then you can rectify that um, within the next two weeks. Does that sound appropriate, Ms. That's Rice? That's fine. I'm happy to do that. It is my understanding that the polls have been placed pursuant to a grant of location. Okay. They already have been placed? My understanding is they were placed last week. That's not a grant of location in, in the way we look at it. It's a license. But, but a grant of location is a, is a special... The grant of locations is a license that is granted just for use on public way. Okay, so we'll investigate it. No, I don't private Especially. property. Right. They're already there. It's the permanence of it for us. You can yeah. understand. We're mm -hmm. rebuilding that school. At some point in the future, they're probably going to have to do that again. And who knows, you know, there was talk about repositioning it completely on the field this year. So mm -hmm. I'd feel better if we ask town council to come back to us. I'm not opposed to it. I just, mm -hmm. but I hear that you need it. So, uh, and we have time before town meeting to be able to uh, re discuss this and take a vote before town meeting. So move to table to March 18th? Second. Is that okay? March 18th? Is that all right with you? Uh, sure. It should be just a quick thing. That's the only reason. I know we have a full agenda on the 18th. Maybe you don't even have to be here for that if, if, 
it's been answered to your satisfaction with our town council, Ms. Kelly, okay? That's fine, thank you. Okay, thank Should you. I be asking to table this without prejudice or anything like that? Yeah, <laughs> we're not prejudiced. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. So yes, it is, the, yeah, I mean, we want to do it for you. We yeah. just want to, we want to do it to protect the town, yeah. Yeah. Okay. as you That's understand. You know, so. Could I also note yeah. something? That, yeah. I, I realize you came in on this warrant article. You might want to stay for a couple minutes because there is one. We are hearing another warrant article regarding utility poles, and you may, you may, it may be helpful to the conversation. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so on the motion to table by Ms. Mahan, seconded by... Second. Mr. Byrne, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Thank you. Uh, next hearing is on Article 12, I believe. Uh, bylaw amendment, town meeting, electronic voting to see if the town will vote to amend the town bylaws to amend the method of voting at town meeting to allow electronic voting or take any action related thereto as gentlemen. Good evening. Uh, Eric Helmuth, Chair of the Town Meeting Electronic S Voting Study Committee and? John Leone, moderator or member of the committee. Thank you very much. Um, the committee at the uh, direction of town meeting has spent the last several months studying this issue intensely. I want to thank the committee for working very hard for several months. We have about half the committee who are town meeting members and half the committee are community members who are technology professionals. That has led to a very rich and thorough investigation. Electronic voting systems improve the accountability of municipal legislative bodies simply by making it easy to quickly and accurately record individual votes and make those votes very easily available to the public. And in recent years, systems like this have, been become, have become affordable to even modest-sized communities in towns which have town meetings. And in fact, in Massachusetts, they are already being used. Currently, the towns of Brookline, Framingham, Billerica, Chelmsford, and Wayland are operating electronic voting systems for their representative town meetings. Wayland's doing it with uh, open town meeting. And currently, other towns besides Arlington that are seriously studying and considering this are Lexington, Belmont, and Amherst that we know of. The technology is familiar to a lot of people who are uh, in school settings, university settings, or even business seminars, audience response clickers, or sometimes called the host or the teacher asks for your vote, you hold them up, you see the results on the screen. And a couple of innovative companies have taken that technology and added layers of security and databases to allow secure, reliable voting uh, by municipal bodies. So there's a handheld device, looks like a TV remote, you click that, it goes to a radio receiver that's attached to a computer that's running a special software on top of PowerPoint. <laughs> the computer display uh, shows the votes that are currently up for, up for voting on the screen and then can show the results of the tally or if desired, the actual individual votes of each member in a rotating grid up on the screen. The systems that we have started to look at are very flexible and they allow a number of configuration options to suit the specific needs and desires of how the town meeting wants to operate the system. The benefits of the system as we see it are really an improvement. You know, nothing is broken in town meeting. The way we're voting has been, it's been working well for a number, of, for, for a long time, decades and longer. Uh, but it's an opportunity to improve specifically to improve accountability because what these systems do is make it really easy for us as representative town meeting members, as representative legislators at the most local level to communicate to our constituents what positions we take on their behalf. The systems like this and procedures like this have the ability, the potential to further elevate town meeting as a real legislative body that's representing the interests of their constituents. The system may save a little bit of time, especially as we would get used to it. Um, not enough to shave a night off, night off of town meeting, and that's not really the main driver of this. And the committee feels very strongly that there are some incidental benefits like that and ease and, and flow that, that could become apparent. Uh, but we're really in this and really interested in this for the accountability. We have, as I mentioned, uh, been aware of other communities. We've paid visits to Brookline and Framingham and watched many hours of, of community access video of other towns that are using these systems. And we've talked with them. We've talked with their moderators, with their technology staff, with the town meeting members, and have found across the board a wide level of acceptance, 
of, of ease of use, of reliability, of confidence by the town meeting members. We went to Brookline the first night they used the system and it went off without a hitch. People were prepared and well trained. I talked to some town meeting members in Framingham who really represent a cross section of the town. Not one of them had anything bad to say about the system. They said it's been really well received. The community has been very glad to get this extra information on the website of the town after each meeting on how their representatives voted. And it's gone very well. And in the study of our committee thus far, we have reached similar conclusions about the potential. In your packets uh, is, is an example of our study as a request for information, an RFI that we issued to a couple of leading vendors. If you're interested in the responses, I'd be happy to make those available. But we were satisfied, and more important, the technology professionals on our committee were satisfied that the systems as described and marketed currently are reliable, secure, uh, do what we need them to do. Also, uh, re regarding the financing of a system, there's another uh, motion in your packet from the uh, Finance Committee, a vote that they took. And uh, we appeared before them a couple of weeks ago. And they agreed to appropriate, you know, pending approval of this by town meeting, both by bylaw, which is why we're here tonight, and, and by overall enthusiasm, um, a sum of $10,000 that would fund the rental of a system for as many sessions as it would go in the year 2014. I mean, the reason for that had to do with capital expenditure planning and other considerations, but, but that's where we're at uh, with that. And I think finally it's important to note that we have carefully consulted with key stakeholders in the town. We've spoken at length with the town clerk and her staff, the town manager, the town IT director. I've had a lot of conversations with the moderator. Mm -hmm. And um, so far everyone we've talked to has been supportive in principle, feeling that this is a practical system that the town could support and operate. I will turn this over to, uh, to Mr. Leone to specifically discuss uh, the vote that our committee took last week and the bylaw warrant article that's before you. Um, and happy to entertain any questions now or after he's done. Thank you, I'm first going to expand a little bit on what Eric said. Um, basically, every town meeting member, upon entering the hall after they check in with the um, clerk at the front desk, would be issued their own clicker. And I say clicker because they look like a TV clicker. Um, we would all have our own designated number. If the thing stopped functioning, we'd be able to hot swap it out, uh, give them a new one right then and there. They would just have to get the attention of the moderator, give them a new clicker, and we're good to go. The devices have, um, besides all the normal numeric keypad, they have a one, two, and three button, or yes, no, and abstain button. The way we would work it, is instead of calling for all, everybody in favor say yes, everybody in favor press one, everybody opposed press two, and then they have the, the option to abstain. We wouldn't count the abstentions just as we don't count them now. And the, the bylaw as we're envisioning it right now, I would, between Wes Beale who's here, Adam Oster and myself, we've got a subcommittee rewriting some possible bylaws. The, the one that we're leaning towards would take the, our existing bylaw and just add in, in the first instance, the, vo the vote would be by voice or, if available, electronic tally device, which is, seems to be what they call the clickers. I guess clickers wouldn't look too good in our bylaw. And that would give us the option, if they're broken, the system's down, we can still move forward and go ahead and vote. On all the housekeeping articles, um, in, further in the warrant where we just go through and knock out 10 of them, 15 of them the night before we're ending, they're all unanimous votes. Just keep doing those um, by voice because it's too quick. It's unanimous, boom, boom, boom. In the second instance right now, if five people arise after a voice vote, we do the standing vote. The clicker, if we used it in the initial vote, would eliminate the need for a standing vote altogether because we have a couple different options on how to display our information. The behind us on the big screen, we can either list the tally, 118 yeses, 38 noes, or we can put up there um, Mr. Chapdelaine, who's not a town meeting member, but I'm going to use him, voted yes. That would be, if we went with that, it would make every vote a de facto roll call. I'm personally kind of against that. For one, it'll take too much time. The committee has come up with 
in the third instance, we'll also use, if 35 members should arise, we'll do a roll call or an electronic tabulation. In that case, we have two options. Right now, we do a second vote. Everybody stands up. You voted once, yes or no. We could either, so to speak, pull the screen back and show how everybody voted the first time around and just display how you all voted, or we can have a second vote. We were going to present those two options to town meeting. Um, eliminating the second vote, in, in our opinion, would be a, not a radical change, but it would change our tradition of having the second option. So we, we're bantering that one back and forth. So what we came up with is that we will go to first three paragraphs, two paragraphs of the bylaw, we'll just add in the tally, and then one of them would say, if 35 people arise, we'll reveal the vote. If 35 people arise, we'll do another vote. It'll only take 10 to 15, 20 seconds, whatever we decide is the right amount of time. Brookline uses 20 seconds. 20. I think Framingham might be 40. Yeah, but yeah. they're always done in 20 seconds. Yeah, it's extremely quick. It's very fast. Um, so we were going to present that two options, A and B, to town meeting. The other part that we were thinking of adding into the bylaw is if we don't display all of the numeric tally, um, how everybody individually voted. We want it to be on the website the next day so that my constituents come back and how did John vote on that leaf blower article? How did he vote you on would that, say that, wouldn't that, you? that doggy <laughs> one? Well, that's the only, I know, only I know. one we've had a roll call in 19 oh, yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's not gonna really save us time in the roll calls because we don't really have that many. It's gonna be that ability for the citizens to see how we voted and to see how did they vote. And actually, it's also gonna be an attendance keeper. Let's not fool ourselves. At the beginning of the meeting, we're gonna to have to say, everyone test your clicker. We're gonna know if everybody's there. Mm -hmm. At the end of the night, maybe we can do a motion to adjourn with the clicker. We're gonna find out who left. <laughs> so, Are you saying town meeting members leave before the meeting's over? No, <laughs> never. Well, I think to, but, the, to the point of, uh, you know, will this create, I mean, we hope that it does create more discussions with town yeah. meeting members about votes. And, you know, the dog votes and leaf blower votes are, can, can be stimulating discussions. Uh, but what it also does is if it's used for all the important votes, is it creates a whole body of votes that we as town meeting members can be, we can be judged by the entirety of our work. Mm -hmm. uh, all our mm -hmm. votes in our service, and not just those hot button votes, which is what we have now. If there's a one off roll call on a really controversial vote, this gives me as a town meeting member the opportunity to, to have my, many of my votes on record, and I can say, look at everything else I do. You know, I'm not just about this one vote. Yes, sir. I'm really interested in this, and I thank you for your excellent work, Eric and John, and the, uh, Wes and the rest of the committee for all that you've done. So. Uh, sometimes at town meeting after the break, mm -hmm. there seems to be less people in the hall than were there before the break. I'm, I'm not saying I have ever left after <laughs> or, or before the break. What is to prevent me from handing Stephen my clicker? Say, well, hopefully the, um, for me and make it look like I'm there. Well, yeah, besides the town meeting's the moral aptitude of right, right, not right. wanting to be a cheater, <laughs> the guy sitting next to you saying, hey, Mr. He Moderator. <laughs> Ms. Kropelka has three clickers. Right. That's and, all she has? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you would hope that the other town meeting members would turn them in. Right. Uh, because it, it does really, to do that, defeats the whole purpose of a representative. I agree. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. just asking. Mm -hmm. it, it would just be just curious about it. I, a I moderator and, and the other town it's, meeting members right. severely shunning that person. Right. If, so, if we have the votes displayed on the screen as well, someone can say, well, Mr. Greeley voted. Is Mr. Greeley in the room? Mm. Right. Um, yeah. and, and other towns have dealt with this very proxy voting is kind of the term, and they've dealt with this. And you know, I think the short answer is all these deterrents that are, are possible. If we really needed to, we could have tight control over the administration and turning in of the remotes. Right. Um, but the, it's also worth noting that you know that is a new potential instance of fraud that, that this system could introduce. It also knocks out a couple of existing potential we have now where people can be in the enclosure and either intentionally or inadvertently participate in a voice or a standing vote, right. um, which this system mm -hmm. almost 100% precludes. So there are trade-offs. Right. So you've been saying, for example, like uh, up in screen, my, Mr. Chapterlain voted yes. So I assume that each town meeting member 
would need to be assigned a particular numbered clicker tally. Correct. Uh, so I'm number 252 throughout the next town meeting season. Mm -hmm. right? So here's my real question to that, which is, it always irks me, I don't know who's on the speaker's list. This is no, I'm not a criticism, mm -hmm. but we've done it for years. But for example, the vote comes up to um, uh, 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 stop debate, whatever the word I'm looking Terminate. for. Terminate. Uh, and a lot, oftentimes we'll say to John, John, how many names are on the list, right? And, and so often he and Stephanie are just there, and that's all they have to do on some of these issues because there's so many hands going up. If, if we have a number assigned, is the technology such, could we also then, on an article, put a speaker's list up? So someone clicks and says, I want to speak on this, and the name appears. It, have, did they do that in Brookline or Framingham? No town has taken that option, and actually um, one of the vendors, um, how did they put it? We, we, asked, we asked about the capability, yeah, and they and said it is possible but not recommended, and we, you know, if this moves forward, we would have a conversation with them to see what they meant. Yeah, um, I, I think one of the problems with that is that you're going to have the jeopardy. Who's going to press the button first? Yeah. Right now, we well, see what, the, the hands hand. don't go up within the first second you yeah, say, well, you know. Yeah, right. by the time I look up, right. uh, you see all the hands and you start writing them down. But that's what, see, an electronic yeah. system, the first click is the first name that goes up. Well, right? it, it, the number's already assigned to people. But then right? it's, a, it's a matter of, I don't know how the, anyhow, we didn't explore the software capabilities right. of that, whether it well, just roll in front of me, whether it would yeah, roll I, in the. I know, I know a couple of them also, but if you don't mind, let me just ask to finish my mm -hmm. question, then I'll turn it over to, <coughs> to uh, my colleagues. But, it just seems to me if a number is assigned to a name, I mean, obviously now, um, uh, I chose not to run for town meeting because there's enough in my precinct, and so since as a selectman I get a chance to speak, but it irked the heck out of me last year, I didn't get to vote. Uh, it, you know, but now I absolutely have to become a town meeting member if we're gonna use this mm. tally to be counted. Uh, you know, because you're talking well, about yeah, the next be, day in the paper, how did really yeah, vote? Yeah, to vote, yeah, know. sure. We, he didn't vote, you know, yeah. uh, so anyhow. Um, how close are we to being able to vote in a local election at home with this kind of technology? Mm. Mr. Dunn shaking his head. I was going to say, it's far oh, down the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, I'm just curious. I mean, I, oh. I, I, it's, just it's a very, it's a very different technology, is, technology you know, proposition. Is yeah. Going, yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Oh, that was my first thought. Can I vote by my phone? Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But, right. but I, I would appreciate if we could look into that technology, because I really do think, you know, honestly, if I see Eric's going to, Eric is on, is on the list to speak, I won't go on the list. He'll do a better job than I will. Mm -hmm. I'll shut up. Yeah. Uh, but if I don't know who's on the list or how many are on the list or, or we're asked to suspend debate, just seeing that list to me I think makes all, it also shows us, the whole town meeting, how big an issue is this? How interesting is this to people? And since we have to assign a number, it seems to me there can't be that large a step in the technology to just... John calls, so who'd like to speak, click, 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 and all of a sudden, 251 names go up on the list. Mr. Byrne. Now we get someone to move the question. <laughs> Beat that horse to death. No, I, I agree. I, I really like this idea, and I like Kevin's, or the, Mr. Chairman's idea of uh, you know, making a list when people raise their hands. I'm sure. Um, no question I had with a $10,000 um, potential to rent the clickers. Yeah. Is there, um, have you looked into further down the road, potentially you know, buying it? Yes. Yeah, well, they, we went forward to the finance committee and we've got um, in the RFP a, we asked for how much will it cost to rent these things on a yearly basis, what are the costs going forward for rental, how much to purchase mm -hmm. it. Um, to purchase it would be a uh, capital item. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a two year time frame. If town meeting votes to go with it this year, that wouldn't put the devices in their hands till 2015. Mm -hmm. This way if we rent it, we can have them in our hands next year. Mm -hmm. See if we like them. Yeah. Yeah. We might Test decide drive. these are great. We got to buy them. If we don't like them, we haven't bought them. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a test run, as you say, Ms. Mm Hamahan. -hmm. But it, that would be the quickest way to get them into our hands. And um, it wouldn't. You talk about um, in the uh, paperwork that we have here uh, to permits, but does not require the use of electronic. Well, oil? yeah. You, is you, that you, you don't want to require about? because if if the computer crashes, right. yeah. we want to be able to continue. Right. Okay. Just go back, we'll just the, go back to the go back to what we've been doing for yeah. 200 years. The, the expectation, based on the experience of other communities, is that once they've invested the money. In fact, I saw this on, on Framingham's video, uh, one of their sessions is once you've purchased or 
laid out in all to get a system, there is there's appropriate pressure to use it. Um, so mm. we're not you know we're not too worried about people not being willing to use it as long as they trust it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but but a, I think it is wise to to not require it so that you can. Yeah, it's going to take. Glitches. I mean, even I'm going to not trust the thing for three or four votes to make sure when I press one, it shows up green next to my name. I'm going to want to turn around and look. But after we've all gained trust in the system that this thing actually, when I press one and it says you voted yes, mm -hmm. that it's really yes up there, once we get that level of trust among the members, we'll probably use it on almost all the votes. I mean, why not? It's quick. It's to it's would eliminate any standing votes because we'd have a tally on every vote instead of me just saying, oh, the yes is one. And you can program a yeah. two-thirds majority threshold right into the software so it's instant, yep. you know, no calculator fingers. And mm. so, so the names are already up there and it's just like in the state house, it's just the name is up? Well, no, it, it, it's a PowerPoint presentation. So they, they would, with us, you could put up What's How a special we, yeah. Yeah. yeah, whether it's uh, four precincts at once or whatever is legible from the back mm -hmm. of the hall. It's about it, 60 names per screen yeah. and, and then it rotates through. And it would just say, yeah. you know, Kevin Greeley, yeah. yes, no. Okay. But um, they can be sorted by precinct and, and alphabetical. Would, and, you know, it's, it just, we've seen them in the halls. It's, it's pretty legible if you decide to show the names. Yeah, it just takes a few minutes yeah. to yeah. Gun, run through each of those screens, mm -hmm. yeah. right. which is why you don't want to do a roll call on every vote. Yeah. Right, right. But I think that you know, the le leaving the flexibility, not, not encoding, our recommendation is not to encode too many of those procedures in the bylaw so that there is time to grow with the system, learn with it, see what the moderator prefers, what time meeting members prefer mm -hmm. about questions like that. Thank you, no, it's very clear the work, how much work you guys put into this, so thank you. Mr. Mahan. I just have five points and maybe it's leave it with you all and the town manager. Um, I'd like to see the RFIs that we received and if it's too voluminous, just the summary at the beginning. I don't know, like three or four pages. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd just yeah, like to absolutely. see it. Um, that was my first thing. My second thing is I'm going to wait until the committee in concert with the town manager. Um, I envision the custodian of this as determined by the moderator and whoever else. Possibly will be IT, Dave Good. Um, Dave, Dave's come to some of our meetings. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I'll leave that to you all, but I'd like to know when that's decided, who is the person who oversees this in terms of physically. Um, I looked through what you sent out for the RFI. It may be in there and I didn't see it, but I was just curious and when I get a copy of, when the entire board gets a copy of the RFIs, I'm just curious if uh, what happens in my house, that clicker gets dropped three, four, five times a day. If there's one vendor or vendors that also, I didn't see that in the questions in here. I saw about battery and handheld. Um, so if I could leave Question that with about, you. About durability? Durability, like they're gonna get dropped. Mm -hmm. You know, so can we get the Duracell or the Dewatt? Well, the, or the problem with the dropping when they pick it up, they're gonna get a wicked bad electric shock. <laughs> <laughs> so we're hoping after the second um, drop, they'll never <laughs> drop it again. <laughs> then um, the last three things I have is, again, I'll leave with the committee. You may already be doing this in, in concert with the town manager. If we could just maybe either inform or have we checked already, and I didn't see that in here, um, in terms of our requirements on, under the Disability Act, do we need to have at least one for visually impaired or whatever? So if we could just investigate that, and I know the Commission on Disabilities has said, you know, we're here, we're here as a resource. Um, I don't know if that's, so or we, we at the very least, if you that, could that's report. That's a good point. Yeah, if you could send yeah. them a report or whatever. Um, yeah. um, just because they sometimes feel like we're leaving them out of the loop and, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, we don't intentionally do that, but so we're trying to get them in. And then the last two points when you were talking about, this is an enhancement, I agree, talking about possibly, again, town meeting's gonna have the ultimate say on this, possibly eliminating the second vote. I like what Mr. Berger said, I think that was you, Eric, that we just want Helmuth. to enhance. Oh, Mr. Helmuth. I have, <laughs> have Beal, Berger, Helmuth, and <laughs> sorry. Um, wow. Uh, I'd like to not eliminate anything. I'd like to enhance it, as you said. Yeah. And then last, I would just be curious after looking at the RFIs, it may be in there, <coughs> and or establishing who the custodian of it is. If there's any inherent program in the system that we ultimately purchase that sort of does like what they do in labs and radiology labs, sort of a spot check, a program that just runs it on its own and, <coughs> and checks it and says, I, I don't know if that exists in this technology. I know that they oh, do. Like, like internal test data? Yes. 
Yeah, I'm sure. It does. I mean, but we don't necessarily have to do that because you're saying That's it's going to go on the website the next day, and the best person to look at that are the people who voted, and they can say, "Hey, I know I voted that well, way." They have to but see I'm that just curious. Sometimes they add a feature like that. Yeah, well, one, of the, one of the devices that we're looking at, the leading vendor That's in it. Massachusetts, offers a device that gives a confirmation on it. It has a little screen, and it confirms that you voted yes, no, or abstain, and, and, and that's positive feedback from the receiver computing unit itself. Mm -hmm. um, so you know right away. So you know right away if you're done. Which is the one we kind of Oh, no, no. It's quite, we, no, it's a very good question, and it's very, I think confidence in the vote is very yes. important mm -hmm. for this kind of change in this kind of system. Um, absolutely needs to be trusted. I'm and all for it, though, but so, thank yeah. you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Kiro. Thank you. Thank you for your, your uh, uh, work on this. Uh, I'm very excited, interested, and, um, and uh, appreciative of uh, <clears throat> what you've done. I think you, you pointed to, to uh, one potential issue that I think we all know will be there is that technology, even fairly simple technology, can be fairly intimidating for some folks. It's going to be very important if we go down this road to have a lot of training for folks annually because mm -hmm. we know that we have turnover. And, and, I, and I think that goes without saying, I'm sure. My, in my little head, in meetings, I'm thinking, can Ms. Fiore run this? <laughs> Not that Elsie's technologically. Right, but you do you need folks who have had a broad, a broad range of experiences that, yeah. and yeah. exposure and to different technologies. Every one of our members yeah. use this. Can they all just, and it, because it's like a TV clicker, mm -hmm. and I think everyone has a yeah. TV. We all know how to press the button. But your point on training Absolutely. is, T well taken, and the other towns have developed um, a Bill video. Has a video. Yeah. They have a video yeah, right on their good. website, which you know we can do the same thing, mm -hmm. yeah. as well yeah. as the first day. Everybody test your device. Yeah. Plus, we're going to want to see that it works. So yeah. we'll run a, a mock vote. Yeah, very yeah. good. No, excellent point. Very good. Um, uh, I just had one uh, question about what you've seen. I mean, you mentioned what happens if the system goes down. I get that. My bigger worry is if somebody, an individual, either forgets their clicker, mm -hmm. or it suddenly malfunctions during a vote yep. and, and doesn't, doesn't record, yeah, and, and making sure that there's some kind of a fail-safe or in some kind of a way, a, um, a, a way that they can be accommodated. Where the no town allows the members to bring the device home. Right. Chelmsford, they, I think they're a little extreme. You give them your driver's license, you get your clicker. At the end of the night, you give the clicker back and you get your driver's license back. I don't I'm not for to, voter ID, so yeah, that's. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think we want to go that way. The, uh, the, uh, the, the devices we saw, we saw a fail, a, fa a failure of a handheld in either Framingham or Brookline, and um, the devices are secure, but they're hot swappable, so the ID is transferred immediately in the database. And um, so you you buy. I think Lexington uh, is buying 10% extra. You know, handhelds just to, to have a reserve so that they're ready to go to be pressed into service if there is any kind of battery or, or I only worry about the scenario where you have a very close vote and you know well, one or two people the, their clickers failed and, and the vote is closed. What for is um, <clears throat> if my device isn't functioning you get the moderator's attention mm -hmm. he holds the timing on the vote. Okay. He or she yeah. will hold the vote mm -hmm. timing Okay. Until Mr. Coral gets a new clicker, he tested it right. Mr. Coral gets the vote, and then we finish voting. And we can. I'd expect the, a bunch yeah. of those at the beginning. Yeah, yeah right. And he can reveal the, the votes on the screen. It's another reason we may choose to do that, mm. yeah. just so that you know that your vote has been recorded right there in that moment. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of the towns are doing that. Thank you. Uh, so, do I understand then from your proposal that standing votes will essentially become obsolete? If we're using it as a tally, yes. We would have no, okay. no, no reason to do it because we all, if we're using the clicker and it says 118 to 12, yeah. mm -hmm. there's no reason to have a standing vote. Okay, it, it's less precise. Sure. Oh, yeah. No, I just want to make sure I understood what you're yeah. saying. So um, leave the option in the bylaw. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. yeah. Um, I am always fascinated with how technology changes the way people behave. And, uh, you know, and, and the, like the way, and it isn't just like, you know, the, I mean, they're pressing a button rather than raising their hands. One of the things that I've always felt about town meeting is you get social signals by the other people who are standing up. Mm -hmm. Like, you, so votes are swayed by exactly, by yeah. you see who's standing up and who isn't, then you stand up and you don't at the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. um, did you guys talk about that? Because it feels like that in some ways is going away with yeah. this. Yeah, we, we discussed that how, it, um, in standing votes, someone might vote one way, and the second time on the standing vote, they're going to look around and say, ooh, all my buddies are standing. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, they conform the, the, to social pressure. Sure. If they sit in that section, they're not going to, if they sit <laughs> over there, they're going 
Indiana. Yeah. That drives the, me nuts. The system, yeah. that, uh, the system that Brokeline and Framingham um, have purchased allows for the option of actually showing the votes coming in real time. Mm -hmm. So there is some of that, that feeling that if we, want, if we would choose to do that, that you could wait, wait until you see how your neighbor votes up, up on the screen. Um, other towns have decided to not show that until, uh, the, until the votes are in. Yeah. And I think that really does speak to the issue of culture. And, and, and I was pleased that that particular system is flexible enough to account for that cultural preference. Yeah. I guess I will, encar I will say that I like be the, the visual signals. And um, I think that uh, I agree that there is definitely some times where it's like, you know, my buddies are doing this, and so therefore I'm going to do it the same thing. But there are other times where I know that there's um, a member of town meeting who has spent a lot more time on a particular issue than I have or has a lot more knowledge about a particular issue than I do. And I would defer to their judgment, or at least their judgment would, you know, Impact me, so I. True. Uh, nice so true. I, yeah. um, they, I would. I guess I would. I, I would hope that we would go in the direction of, of permitting that to continue. Regardless, I'm supportive of the experiment. I'm supportive of the plan. I think you guys are doing great stuff. But I, I think you know. I just want to talk about that. Um, I just do, do have one more question, which is: uh, so when will we actually see the proposed vote, like the actual vote of the change of bylaws? Um, and, and, and just you know, my motive is so that we can have it in. So that we can approve it, so that we can have it in our report, and we yeah. can have that report in everyone's well, that, mailbox. Well, those are two, two things I wanted to bring up. I, we, we have to finish debating how we're going to finish it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, present the two different options, mm -hmm. the reveal, not reveal. Then I'm going to obviously work with Juliana on the final wording of it. I haven't given her anything yet. I'm holding it back. Um, then I've got to bring it to the Town Meeting Procedure Committee. Obviously, they their baby as well. They have come to one of our meetings. We've shared with them everything we've done so far. And at that point when I guess the three parties, Juliana, us, them, procedure committee, we could resubmit to you guys um, what, what our couple different options are, have you vote on it, and we were going to ask if our report and our proposed votes could actually go into your packet. Are you going to um, be able to get it done in time? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk, uh, the well, that's right. Marie, when would he need to do all of this in order for it to be printed in the select? And us to vote. Yeah. Um, I would say that it will go to um, town meeting on the 27th. So probably um, June, middle of April. About June 12th, which one? By the 12th. Well, we'd like it, but you know. Okay. Well, well, I think when, when's our last? Town meeting 12th. Yeah. I'm better off. Marie, when's, when's the last time yeah. you guys can? When's our last meeting before that, though? April because we have 6th. to. Sixth, eighth, eighth. That's right. Well, that's the real deadline. Yes, we could bring something on okay. the eighth. Mm -hmm. Right. So you get the eighth and, and have to them the Friday before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Move approval. Yeah. So they can review it. Mm -hmm. Five. Okay. Move favorable action. Second. 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 Yeah. Second. And continued to a degree in terms of uh, what what finally comes out, but we're clearly all excited about this, and thank you yeah. uh, for the kind of work you put into it. Um, just a point I wanted to make to Dan's point. This will be a different kind of visual signal, as in, although I'm colorblind, so I won't say if it's green or red or whatever, the dot colors come up uh, mm -hmm. when it's a vote. Although it'll be under yes or no, would it? Yeah, yes. it'll be oh, a, oh, text, yes. I'll be able to. Yeah. The precinct, yeah. your name, and the a yes, yes no. column, and yeah. no column. Sup the colors are supplemental. It won't but, uh, be a little uh, thumbs up with a like on it. <laughs> no, we have to talk to the uh, okay. uh, DVR <laughs> company. signals we can use. I'm just curious, though, so how large were the Brookline and Framingham town meetings? Because I'm wondering about 252 people checking in and out. A Brookline is 240 something, so they're just a little bit under us. And okay. Framingham, um, Framingham, Framingham was 212. Yeah, Framingham is 212. But uh, Wayland yeah. uses it, and they're For open, open town, town, town meeting, and oh. they get like 800. Wow. 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 But they yeah. don't have assigned okay. clickers. Yeah. Because right. an open town meeting, right. it's, right. it's, yeah. it's anonymous. Right. I think that we've we've seen. Uh, the two towns we visited had some volunteers that were assisting in multiple stations, and you know the town clerk check-in was different, and you you did that, and then you got your your assigned uh, clicker. Okay. So, yeah, we'd yeah, have we, to that would have to be worked out, and would require some some dedicated support. But, um, Great. And uh, the visual signals, but the uh, there'll be lots of speeches before we actually ever get to touch that clicker. Mm -hmm. So we'll <laughs> we'll certainly have a have a. Uh, an idea of our friends and colleagues or those we admire or don't and the mm -hmm. speeches that they've given one way or another. So move favorable action by Mrs. Mahan and seconded by, was that yeah. you, Stephen? Uh -huh. I think Joe got it. Joe raised it. Carol, 
Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All aye. those opposed. Unanimous. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Again. Thank you. Okay, the next is Article 13, which is a bylaw amendment regarding animal control regulations. But before we do that, uh, Jessica, I don't know whether you will be able to or not, but recently um, in the selectman's office, if Kevin doesn't knock this over, Jessica, tell me if you can get that or not. Uh, we, we uh, Mary Bartholomew, uh, who actually now lives in California, but recently was cleaning out the attic of her grandfather in Medford and came across this calling all dogs from 1939 uh, here in Arlington, and it was for an anti-rabic vaccine, which was free of charge by the Board of Health here in Arlington. And I just thought it was so cool. I don't know how well you can see it, but we'd love to know if we could ever identify the young woman, uh, it's a young girl, uh, who is dwarfed by a rather large dog uh, standing there beside her. But it's just a cool piece of history, and I want to really thank Mary Bartholomew and ask, I, I think we should send her a letter from the Board of Selectmen telling her how much we really appreciate it. And Marie, thank you for bringing it to my attention. By the way, uh, calling all dogs for an anti-rabic vaccine was free of charge in 1939. So. I, I don't know whether there is an anti-rabic vaccine anymore. Oh, there still is. That's what it's called. There still is, yeah. But the, the dogs must have to get it, I would imagine. But they required licensing or, or whatever yep. at the time. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, I, I, this is a uh, bylaw amendment. Uh, see if the town will vote to amend the town bylaws to comport with recent changes in state law adopted through Chapter 193 of the Acts of 2012, an act furthering regulating animal control, including but not limited to changes concerning dog licensing, kennel licensing, operation, animal vaccination, dangerous and nuisance dogs, and animal control, restraint, and treatment, or take any action related thereto, Madam Council. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, as the board will recall, uh, I um, was asked and, and granted uh, time on uh, a meeting agenda, I believe, in November to explain an overview to the board of uh, changes in state law that went into effect at the end of October. They're fairly wide ranging, and there were um, a number of discrete areas that it, um, have an impact on the town bylaws um, as they exist and in new areas. Um, essentially, the areas of uh, dangerous and nuisance dogs, which this board is familiar with um, addressing those complaints. Uh, dog licensing, there are some changes, many of which this town already does, for instance, um, requiring different fees for uh, dogs that are spayed or neutered and, and dogs that are not. Um, kennel licensing, which is a brand new area. Um, there are five different kinds of kennels under the law addressing, you know, types of businesses that we do have in Arlington. And um, uh, tethering dogs outside, which is a fairly um, detailed part of the law. Uh, there are other parts of the law that I did not uh, propose uh, putting in bylaws because they really are more back end in terms of uh, funding for training for the animal control officer. This board's appointment of the animal control officer will do that separately, but it's not um, something that would ordinarily be in bylaws because it doesn't pertain to conduct of, um, of residents and how they um, handle their, um, their dogs. Uh, I want to point out at the outset that, that, that what's being proposed, there are no changes in um, off-leash dog parks or uh, off-leash hours or anything like that. There, there's uh, nothing in the state law that, um, that makes any change in that. In the um, red line version of the bylaw, and it's, it's very long, and I apologize, and um, it took me a long time, um, but uh, there are two minor changes in uh, section two of the existing bylaw dealing with the leashing of dogs, and those are just that the time period uh, that the animal control officer may hold a dog um, that is found to be at large is changed in the state law from 10 days to seven, and also um, the daily uh, fee for uh, the animal control officer holding the dog for that period of time is raised in the state law from $2, $2 per day to 40 um, But other than that, there are no changes in the, um, in the leashing. Um, as I've stated, the, um, 
the changes deal in the areas that I've talked about. I did want to address one point uh, that Mrs. Mahan made, which was an excellent point. Um, in, in light of um, if this board um, is considering uh, a complaint about a dangerous or nuisance dog, which the board currently does uh, through delegation of that hearing process to the police department, nothing would need change. That could continue to happen. But there are uh, much more specific definitions of what's a dangerous dog, what's a nuisance dog, and what remedies the board can order for either. Um, the biggest change is that the board, uh, in no town, um, the board will no, will no longer be able to order banishment of a dog to another town. Um, and this board was not uh, really in the habit of doing that anyway, understanding that that really did, um, in most cases, amount to a death sentence for the dog. It will create, um, hopefully it won't, but it could create the situation where uh, this board would have to make more difficult decisions that rather than um, shuffling a dog off to another town, um, the board you know, would need to order that dog to be euthanized. But there are other, um, other remedies, interim remedies, that the board can consider, which this board already had done in terms of um, requiring muzzling, requiring restraint of the dog, re requiring um, um, increased training of the dog and things like that and the board um, does have the authority to do that. I did want it to Mrs. Mahan's point um, following the um, uh, multiple attacks in uh, I believe it was Marshfield but it could have been Mansfield um, over the past couple of weeks by one dog um, that had been ordered by the Board of Selectmen in a split vote to be <coughs> euthanized but had been returned to the owner pending <coughs> the appeal period and in that um, a 10 day appeal period that dog did in fact then attack again uh, another child in that case the um, child of the dog's owner um, so the suggestion from Mrs. Mahan which was a good one was that could we have an automatic impoundment after the board uh, orders a dog to be euthanized unfortunately um, under the current state law uh, that was changed in October, we have to make a, an affirmative motion for that. If an appeal is filed, we have to go to court and seek that order of impoundment pending appeal. There actually, I did notice in the Boston Globe last week, there was an editorial calling for a change in that law following the, um, the events that took place in Mansfield. But currently, um, we have to take the affirmative step of asking the district court, which is the reviewing court, for an order of impoundment, which I could certainly do if an appeal was filed. Um, there, so there's a lot here. Um, I, I did this sort of earlier rather than later because most of these changes are technical. I wanted to give the board time to think about it. The board does not need to vote on this proposed vote tonight if it doesn't want to, but because there's so much, um, I wanted to um, put it in front of you. Um, but largely, um, these changes are really to implement the new state law. The one kind of policy decision, I guess, I, I took the liberty of making, and the board can disagree with me if it wishes, um, is that under the existing bylaw, we do not allow kennels. And kennel was defined as uh, ownership of more than three dogs. Um, we have two businesses in Arlington that would fall under the definition of kennel in the new state law that is imported into um, bylaws. Because I um, assumed that the board would not want to recommend bylaw changes that would result in the closure of existing businesses in town, mm. uh, what I did was I um, proposed deleting the section of the existing bylaw stating that um, kennels are not allowed in town and instead replace that with the definitions of the five different types of kennels from personal kennels, which is if you own four dogs or more, all the way up to um, breeding kennels or veterinary kennels, they're all defined in the new bylaw. Um, that to allow um, people who have those businesses to apply for these licenses from the town clerk. And the doc that does not mean that every type of kennel that's set forth in the state law and thereby the new bylaw would be allowed under zoning. But um, for instance, a kennel that um, had overnight boarding uh, may not be allowed under zoning. Those, um, those determinations would need to be made if the application was made for that type of use. But under the, the existing businesses obviously are allowed under zoning because uh, there. they were permitted yeah. to open. So that's really the only kind of policy decision I made. And again, there's a lot there, so certainly if the board wants to consider it and, um, and take a vote at a later date, uh, that would be fine. But um, that's what I put before you. Um, 
Uh, it's up to you guys. I don't want to move favorable action. If I mean, have this. I would like to move favorable action, and also, if it's all right, my colleagues ask town council to explore the uh, question that I posed to her about during an appeals process, um, if we could have a remedy of requiring impoundment or something like that. I, I understand that's not in here right now. That's something you would explore outside of this. You know, g given the, the state law is very precise right. on that remedy, mm -hmm. um, I, I can't recommend right. having a bylaw yeah. that's opposed to that. But what we certainly can do is petition for that, such an order in the event. Yeah, I don't want to hold this up, so I'd like to move favorable action on that and let Ms. Rice further define that and do, address uh, it second. next year. Which is okay with it, but do we even have the capability to impound dogs, or is there a limit yeah, to the do. number we could? We do. Um, we uh, Currently, we have a, a small uh, type of kennel that's under the control of the animal control officer, although um, uh, one of the police captains, uh, along with the animal control officer, have um, explored actually entering into a contract with a vendor um, that the city of Cambridge uses, and they've asked me to look at uh, the contract with that vendor, um, and it, it looks fine to me. So I think that's something that they're exploring. So you're recommending favorable action, but you'd like clarification on that. Right, so that's not included. I don't want to hold that up. But. Um, it might have been my very first or second meeting as a selectman 24 years ago, and we had a dog hearing. I, had, I was stunned to know we could order that it be euthanized. I was stunned to hear we could order it out of the confines of the town, right? Bob Walsh is a member at the time, and it got pretty heated with the owner of the dog. Bob Walsh finally <laughs> says, I wish we could order the owner out of the confines of the town. Not yet, nor euthanized. <laughs> I didn't know where to look. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> and he, he immediately, Mr. Greeley, I was like, uh, yeah, yes, whatever I was voting on. Uh, okay, so move favorable. Is there uh, more discussion? No. Nope. I'm ready to vote it. Okay. okay. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. So the next article is on self-serve gasoline to see if town meeting will vote to amend the town bylaws to repeal Title V, Article V, concerning self-serve gas dispensing or take any action related thereto. Uh, is the sponsor here? Mr. Wagner? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Carl Wagner, and I'm uh, representing this proposed change to the bylaws. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, if you'd like me to speak about, about them. Yeah, what do you propose? Uh, it's, I just think it's uh, interesting to note as we look at regulating things like uh, not selling water bottles and stuff like that, you take a favorable look at the fact that I'm trying to get rid of something that I think <laughs> is unnecessary rules and le legislation. Uh, I've, uh, I grew up in this town. I've lived here a long time. I uh, found out last year when I was having a car repaired and a rather tricky repair uh, and came back and the car wasn't quite done. Uh, and the guy was running around being the mechanic and also selling gas to people that he said, your town requires me to, to, to pump gas for folks. And I said, oh, I didn't know that. I never really thought about it. A lot of people have never really thought about it. Uh, there's a thing called the Arlington email list. Some of you have read, I'm sure. I, I don't usually read it because there's so much of it. And I was surprised to see that self-serve gas has been popular in the last couple of days as a discussion topic. So people do think about it and do care about it a lot. But um, I am simply asking that the town do what most other towns in Massachusetts do and most other states, except for, except for two in the United States do, which is not keep a, an old rule that probably is based on old technology and the lack of people to be able to safely pump gas. I'm asking for that rule to be removed. So, so uh, I, I should be the last one, and I keep speaking first. Excuse me. Who would like to speak on this? Mr. Kiro. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Wagner, for bringing this forward. I actually I enthusiastically support this for, uh, for precisely the reason that Mr. O Wagner um, recommended. We, we do seem to be in a position in a cycle here where we're constantly being asked to, to ban and restrict <laughs> activities. Um, I do feel that this is outdated. I actually grew up in one of the other towns in the Commonwealth, a few towns left that has uh, a ban on self-service gasoline, and uh, I would go to surrounding towns and, and use the self-serve. Um, I, I, I think it's noteworthy that um, you know, a lot of the concern uh, when the bans originally came in 
centered around uh, public safety issues. But we did put this out for comment from departments and the, um, the chief and the deputy chief replied back to us that they had no concerns given that state codes do uh, adequately cover this right now. Um, a few folks that I've talked to I, when, who their knee-jerk impulse has been to say, well, I, I don't like it because I want to be served at the pump. But I think it's important to, to recognize that what Mr. Wagner is bringing forth is not something saying that we, we ban full-service gasoline. We're just opening up an, an, an option. Some people like to be able to go in, get out, pump it, and, and go on their way and not wait for the attendant to attend the other two or three uh, cars um, at the island. And I, and I think it is, there's a lot to be said for um, uh, providing that, that, uh, that choice um, to folks. I think it makes us um, uh, you know, competitive vis-a-vis -vis our um, uh, surrounding communities as well. I think it's also important, and, and I know you've done more research than, than, than I have, to um, note that uh, you know, any, even if there is a service station which is providing self-serve only, somebody who is disabled and requires assistance, I believe the Americans with Disabilities Act requires that the station assist them if, if they call for, for assistance. And we've all seen the stickers on, on, the, uh, on the pumps. Um, so for myself, I'm, I'm I'm actually very supportive of this, and, and I would support a, a motion for um, a favorable action. I'd like to hear from the rest of my colleagues. Okay, Ms. I'm sorry, Ms. Brown, Mr. Okay. Um, I'm just going by town meeting member hat right now. I've heard from numerous neighbors and two businesses, gasoline businesses in my precinct, that they don't want to, they fear that this will, I know you're saying it will give the option, but I've even heard from the business owners, but I didn't ask permission to quote them, that I'm going to be forced, because everybody's going to do it, offer it a little bit cheaper, because you can, because there's less people being employed. And I've heard from so many people, the list seems to be running, I can't really tell the way, the way it's running, because it started getting into a semantic and kind of having fun with it, but um, I haven't heard from one person in my precinct, business owner or resident, who's in favor of this, and I, I've been amazed by how many people have contacted me, including just walking down the street and doing some other neighbor things. So um, I respect that you want to move favorable action. I just want to explain why I'll be voting no. Sure. Could I, could I add a few comments to, to help people who are watching on TV and, and perhaps your opinions of what's gone before on this? Um, this was brought up, I think, in the 70s uh, as a ban, and then in the 80s, uh, people who are still in town were, were um, names that I saw on the record and discussing uh, a possible uh, repeal of the ban in the 80s. Um, everyone I contacted who was uh, attached to that in the 80s now unenthusiastically said they would not be against keeping the ban, uh, would not be uh, for keeping the ban. So I thought that was interesting. I also contacted most of the gas stations. There may be a couple I couldn't get, but I did, I did make three attempts to contact most of the owners of the gas stations. Curiously, the gas station where my car was not quite ready and where the guy was telling me it was a pain to have to fill the gas, the other owner of that station told me they do not support it. So that was a little weird because the, the one I talked to clearly did. Um, but uh, so the, the gas station owners, in fact, one of them told me uh, that he did not think there'd even be much of an employment impact at all. One owner told me just today, he said, um, my guys were being insulted and, and harassed by customers who were insisting on pumping their own gas or that didn't want to touch the hands of the employees or that were basically be being bad customers. So several people I talked to, and I have no, I have no uh, connection monetary or otherwise to these gas stations except the place I took my car the one time. Uh, so, but these, these guys were telling me that they thought it would be a good thing. And, um, and, and then so the, the people I talked to Charlie Lyons, uh, Stephen Gilligan, uh, some other people, uh, Howard Winkler, they basically said they're not against it anymore. And the gas stations that I talked to mostly were, were not against it. And I think, um, I think it would be a change for Arlingtonians, but I mean, even, even, even looking across the state, Arlingtonians who travel across the state, they can pump their own gas. I would support uh, that the the zoning laws that that govern gas go, govern gasoline stations should probably be looked at because there's lots of new changes in gasoline stations anyway, including full serve stations. I would say in the next review they could change the actual gas station zoning by laws so that any look and feel or uh, the way that Arlington works is preserved in that way, but that it doesn't belong in the general bylaws of Arlington to do something that really nobody else is prohibiting anymore. Thank you. I, I was just explaining why I won't be yeah, supporting sure, it. That's, and I, sure. you know what? Ultimately, town meeting will decide, so I'm not. 
No, I um I agree with Mr. Kara, and um, I do support this as long as we can stay on top of those ADA requirements because you do run into some gas stations where you know that someone is not really easily accessible to you know help out, and so if there is. And I think that you know our business owners will do a good job of keeping up with that. Um, so I, I do support this, and I think um, you know it's keeping up with the times to a certain extent. You see it happening everywhere else, and I think it's about time to make that jump. So thank you. Uh, I'm going to support the motion that Mr. Kira is about to make. I move favorable action on the. Uh, he, he had already, but. Oh, did you actually? Well, I didn't actually put place uh, place the motion, so I move favorable action. You're saying I'm wrong. <laughs> What's that? You're saying I'm wrong that you didn't. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, I actually was also here with Mr. Lyons, Mr. Gilligan, and others. There were two differences between what, well, two things. One was the that in the it must have been '89 because that's the first year I was on the board. Although it's a town meeting member before that, but the the. Uh, it, it was allowing for self-serve, but they also must keep a full-serve island. So this, what, if I'm understanding you, this would allow a completely self-serve gas station. Am I correct, Mr. Wagner? Uh, my intent is to remove the prohibition. However, um, the town of Menden it seems to me to be a good example of what we might want to follow. Uh, Menden, this last year, June, I think, uh, removed their prohibition that was in their general bylaws, and they asked their zoning bylaws team with the planning department, et cetera, to come up with uh, logical uh, zoning bylaws that covered things such as they mandated full-serve gas, they mandated a maximum size, and uh, I was talking with someone today who told me that there's all sorts of TVs and stereo systems coming into full-serve and self-serve gas stations. I would think we would want to probably prohibit those, too, in our gas zoning bylaws. So, actually, so you're saying we can still do both? I would think that, my, I, I yeah, assume, yeah. I, I would hope that my action does not make any negative change in the feel of how the gas stations fit into the community, and I would think that the zoning uh, bylaws should should do that, that work instead of the general bylaws. Because I'm with you, I favor it 100%. My, my mother, who's 92, not driving anymore, but in her 80s, she used to yell at my brothers and myself that we weren't pumping our own gas, mm -hmm. that, and she did, you know, she, mm -hmm. she, uh, she had to teach me. Uh, but I absolutely favor self-serve. I mean, I was uh, in, in the line uh, yesterday at, uh, at a convenience store, and a, a younger person in front of me bought a pack of gum and used uh, the debit card. And, I, you know, I just, I, it's like, why wouldn't you just take out a dollar, but that's just so, I mean, so it, it's time, and I agree with you 100%. The other issue, though, that came up, and I remember clearly Mr. Schlichtman came up in front of town meeting and he said he sent his students to Cambridge, to Belmont, to other places, and in all cases, the self-serve gas was more expensive than the Arlington no self-serve gas, which stunned me. Because you would think if it's full serve, obviously that would have an extra expense to it that the self serve doesn't. But anyhow, I, su I support you 100% and thanks for bringing it forward. So, on the, uh, it's a hearing, so anybody else? All right, on the motion by oh, Mr. Mr. Oh, yeah, Mr. Radosha. Mm. He had been silent far too long, let's face it. So, Robert. Bob Radosha, Precinct 11. Uh, basically, I'm okay with this. But the thing is, I've been pumping gas for 53 years. No longer, whatever it is. No more. Yeah, anyhow. Anyway. <laughs> so you and, don't shop anyway. in Arlington, Mr. Well, Radosha. No, no, the point, no, the point I want to make is really, you know, it, it's kind of silly, but I still think I like to do it in Arlington because somebody's being paid to pump the gas. It's a job, okay? Now, that's the part, and I make an effort to do it whenever I can. Now, if I'm going to go buy all self-service, I'll go to Woburn where I can buy it for a nickel less. You know? So it, it's, that, that's my take on it. And the other thing is, uh, if you could turn it off so I can say something, but my wife has no idea where the gas tank is. <laughs> <laughs> and she wouldn't know the first thing about doing it. So that, that, I, I worry about how that's going to work Dosha, out. Joyce please call the select <laughs> <Okay. laughs> right. so, yeah. that, That's simply my take on it. And, but, like, I don't have a problem pumping it. I think it's great, but uh, on the other hand, I hate to see somebody lose a job because of it. Okay, nice. thanks. Thanks. 
And I think a station would be wise to do both, but we'll see the way the bylaws come out. But the first thing we would have to do is remove this so they're allowed, period. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, so who seconded? Sorry. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor, please say the by, by saying town aye. Council is oh, town whoa, 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 yes. Not going to stop council. you. Just point of clarification when I go to write the board's vote. Um, I think what's been proposed under this article is the just straight repeal yes. of, the, of the existing prohibition. And I can write it that way, but a couple board members have mentioned, you know, wanting to keep full serve. Um, if, if we don't write it into the proposed vote, it's going to be gone. I mean, Mr. Wagner makes the point about um, zoning bylaw changes. Those could happen, but they wouldn't happen until next year at the soonest. I did actually, upon re reviewing his materials that he submitted, um, I did check uh, the Menden zoning bylaws and um, there's actually not, there are certainly restrictions on size and things like that, but there's actually not a restriction requiring um, the uh, retention of full serve gas stations. And if a zoning bylaw were changed next year, it wouldn't necessarily apply retroactively. Although Menden does do its gas station permitting the same way that we do, which is by special permit through our redevelopment board. So, so my question is, do you want me in writing this proposed vote to rather than a straight repeal, um, amend it to repeal the prohibition, but also require that a full serve option be retained. I'm not sure in the board's position on that. My, my intention with my motion, Mr. Chair, was just strictly to, to do the repeal. And my reasoning for that is that I, I don't feel comfortable putting that additional <laughs> restriction on because we do have stations of different sizes and some of them are only one island stations. and, and um, but that was my intention. I don't know about the rest of the board. Well, um, so if I'm following what you just said, Juliana. I know it's hard. Uh, so we just repeal it. Let me just pretend for a minute. We only repeal it. Right. And we wait till next year to do any zoning bylaw changes. But what you're saying is if a station has gone completely self-serve before then, they cannot then be mandated to have to put in a full service island as well. Correct. Our full service side to one island. Correct. Hmm. I'm still no. But yeah, well, you've been no all along, right? So yeah. that doesn't change, right? No, no, I just I saw faces, that's all. Does hmm. the board have any thoughts on this? I mean, I, I really would like, I, I want to be sure we can maintain full service, right? We're not, this doesn't eliminate full service. Mm. But we're also not mandating they have to do full service. Is that what you're telling me? Mr. Kiro's proposed vote would not mandate that. Correct. I'm still supporting his motion. As a Again, you're going against me. Hmm. I don't know. You haven't said anything yet. And you too. You're going yes. against me. Okay. Well, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know, the first rule you learn here is you count to three. All those in favor of the motion by Mr. Kiro. So that's all we're doing, if I'm correct, is we're feeling that self-serve is now allowed, Correct. okay? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Nay. Okay, so I haven't learned the count to three yet. <laughs> four to one vote. Okay, Article 15, Regulation of Utility Polls. To see if the town will vote to amend the town bylaws, give the selectmen authority to regulate within the allowable parameters established by state and federal regulations and the National Electric Code. Use of telephone, electric utility, or street lighting poles located on rights of way in the town to ensure that such poles and their uses satisfy the needs of public safety, to ensure prompt replacement of deficient poles, and to ensure the aesthetic and environmental impact of such poles and their uses on the neighborhoods are considered, to license and make changes as appropriate to defray the expense of the upkeep of public ways if attachments including telecommunication devices are attached thereon or take any action related thereto. We did form a subcommittee on this. Who'd like to speak? Do you want to take uh, it? Sure. You're, you're senior. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, you're uh, senior. You take it. <laughs> uh, all right. On your desk, um, <clears throat> you got today just a very brief paragraph which is the minutes of the meeting that uh, we held last week uh, and mr. you can see it was well attended uh, we had several uh, the proponents and uh, mr. Kira and I uh, sat down and talked um, and we decided uh, mr. Kira recommended and um, I supported him proposing a policy uh, we're talking about formalized leverage where we create a utility poll commission, a committee 
that goes out there and it works on an inventory of our polls, in particular the status of polls that we're not happy about, and then works with us uh, to, the, we said, uh, periodic review, at least annual. And so I think the vision that we had was it starts with 90 days and then it goes on, in the, it, especially while we're working through the backlog. Um, Mr. Leonard provided us with dozens of pictures of polls that are in unsafe and but either a combination, of, they range from unsafe to really ugly, but there's definitely a lot of work there that needs to happen. And then the teeth of the formalized leverage would be that um, we would then, when um, a utility wants to speak to the board about placing polls or other things, that we would talk to them about the list and say, we're not going to put you on the list, on the agenda until you also agree to review this inventory with us. And um, I'll say, in, in the two of it was Mr. Kira's proposal, and I supported him. I'll say that my thought on this was, uh, this is something that you only get through constant persistence. Like you have to be persistent with the utilities, and you have to be persistent, and you have to be very firm, and you have to be, you know, you have to maintain it. And I think that probably the board could have been perhaps more aggressive in following up on it in past years, and we didn't. And so that is, you know, like you don't, you don't prune all the time, and then it begins to slip a little bit. And so by creating this policy and creating this committee, we hope to make it such that it's easier for us to maintain vigilance on the issue. So we don't need to favorable action, right? We're just saying right. we're going to take care of this as a board of select. Right. I understand. Yep. Correct. So it's no action on it's the no action motion. on the article. Sorry, so, I should have second, said that. Second, Mr. Dunn. Yeah. I though I thank the representative Verizon for st sticking around to hear about this, and I was very and I guess and I know I'm curious if she has anything to suggest that would help us about that. Like about so here's the thing: we've got pictures <laughs> and poll numbers with. Uh, Dozens of polls that are either double poles or severed, or like like there's things coming off them, or they have wires that are sticking up out of the ground without any casing on them. They've got wires dangling down off them and things like that. Uh, what do you think is the best way for us to get those into your system so that they can be, you know, remedied? Do you, do you have any or do you have any other thoughts about this policy that we're proposing? We have, um, let me first ask you, did you have any representatives from the utility companies at your? Oh, at that meeting? No, we haven't yet. So I'm not, I, all I'm well, saying, like that, I mean, that I've got a list. Step, yeah, that would be the first step. So all right, here we are. I've got a list of polls. What do I do with them? We have a public relations, um, public affairs bureau. Yep. And there's a gentleman who handles um, certain areas. I believe Arlington would be under his jurisdiction and I can get in touch with him tomorrow. Okay. And ask him to contact. Would it be um, the town manager or, or one of you directly? I was actually going to ask. And set up a meeting and possibly then contact the um, both Instar and yeah. um, Verizon. Uh, Verizon is the maintenance setting company for Arlington, mm -hmm. although the poles are jointly owned by both Instar and Verizon okay. in most cases. I was going to ask the exact same question. Uh, Adam, do you think is this, what, what do you think is the best way for us to handle, like hearing the proposal, hearing about this committee, which I think you heard about before, I have, I have. How, what, do you, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> I, I think this proposal is, uh, I would say, as, as good as any to begin a formalized yeah. process for trying to get the utilities in the room and use any leverage we have to get them to listen and begin to address the problem. Okay. So with this list, so I've got 20 polls now that are on my hit list. Do, should we, and we want to give them to Verizon, to uh, the public relations. Is that something that you think should work through the Selectman's office or through, you, or through one of your offices? What do you recommend? Well, frankly, I, we could, I could discuss that Coordinate, with the Selectman's yeah. office and figure right. out what the, what the best way is. Punt. <laughs> Thank you for staying. Sorry. Thank you. I'm sure it's a long night. I'd like to say I wholeheartedly endorse this. I've spoken with Verizon and NSTAR um, union workers about this very issue, and they have said that it's really low priority. We had three workers from Verizon that were told to lay a service, um, and according to the Verizon rules in their book, they said the service was precarious. They called in the foreman, and the foreman said, well, and it was right at the entrance to the Waldo Parallel down Henderson, and the three workers were told, and I can get the names, um, just lay it against the house, wait 10, 15 minutes, and see if it falls. And they said, this is an entrance to a park. It's going, it might not fall, but the first, you know, five, 10 mile an hour. 
And so they protested and wouldn't do it, and they got fired on a Thursday. And I made some phone calls, and, and the president rehired them on a Monday and said they did do the right thing. And what they've said to me over and over again, because I know a lot of them, is towns like Arlington need to. They're going to tell you there's a rep. You report that. We've gotten the list of polls. Some are four, five, six, seven years old that they've been out there. Yeah. And you're saying 90 days. To me, that's a dream. I think this is the way to go. Um, and I support it wholeheartedly, as well as working with the representatives from Verizon. But I've heard from the workers, we need to make it a priority to management for them to make it to the guys and gals in the street. Yeah. And if, I could, if I could just just put just the topping on this. I mean, we're really thinking of, of, a, of a formalized process. So um, I think that we actually have three actions to, to, to take tonight. The first would be to to vote and uh, to recommend no action on the, the warrant article itself. I think we were convinced from from town council's re recommendations that we really don't have a lot of leverage through state law on this. I think the second would be to appoint a, a utility poll. I, I think it's really a working group because they have a very specific function. This isn't make up your own agenda. This is your very specific function is at least once a year compile an inventory and bring it to the board of uh, of selectmen. So I think that the, that the second action we have is to um, to authorize the creation of a utility poll working group. I'd recommend five citizens at large, and that, that we advertise for that. And then the third is to to um, ask town council for assistance in drafting um, an actual policy. And as as Dan s stated, the idea that we had is that on an annual basis, representative from the utility, so it would probably be one representative from each of the utilities, the sharing jurisdiction would come before us and actually respond point by point on each of the lists. And if they say, we haven't, oh, we haven't gotten to this one, we haven't gotten to this one, we haven't got, well, a picture starts to emerge. They say, yes, we've addressed this one, we've addressed this, this is the reason why there's an issue. Picture also starts to emerge uh, there. And that we adopt as a policy that we do not place anything on our agendas unless there is a vote of the board mm -hmm. for, for, a, for a, a matter of uh, specific public ur urgency. And I think we had a good example of that tonight. The Thompson School, obviously, moving a project like that along is a, is a matter of public urgency. Uh, so I think those are the three actions that we have tonight. Um, so who's got the list of 20, and where does it go? So yeah, so the actual, um, I, I, I thought about this. So the, it's currently uh, on the back of the pictures. Um, that so Mayor, I, uh, John Leonard gave us a stack of pictures. I handed it to uh, Ma uh, Marianne, so I know Marianne has it. Uh, we should go through and flip through them, and he wrote down the locations and the poll numbers on the back of each one. Do you think we could type those, that li generate a list from those pictures? And then let's use that list and let's take it up with the um, representative jointly with the town manager. Yeah. And th that will be the start of, the, you know, that's the, f I mean, right. we don't have to wait for the first inventory. We can right. start with that list. Absolutely. Okay. So, so could I move first uh, that we recommend no action on, on the warrant article before Second. Us? All those, right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Second. I move that we uh, create a utility poll working group, which is charged with uh, creating an inventory at least once a year and presenting it to the Board of Selectmen of uh, utility polls and wires, um, w which are uh, d deficient either um, uh, in their maintenance or, or safety, um, consisting of uh, five residents at large and that we advertise uh, forthwith for those positions. Second. Okay. Discussion. Should shouldn't there be a selectman on that committee of five? I don't think we can legally do that. Yeah, I think we're going to problems Ultimately, we that. we get the information presented. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine, but I I, I think it's a, it's it's very good if we have because five citizens could break up the town into sections and do you a walk through once a year or something. Okay. That, that's, we okay. had three interested citizens on the 8 a.m. on Wednesday morning. So, yeah, Mr. Leonard, look what he did already. You know, yeah. after and we could always meeting. put it on the website yeah. report yeah. if you have yeah. a double poll. So, uh, I, all those in favor, please. Uh, did, was it seconded? Second. Yes. Second. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Sorry. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. And your third one. Uh, my third motion, I move that we request town council assist us in the drafting um, of a policy uh, whereby we uh, at least annually receive the inventory to be prepared by the uh, utility poll working group um, and um, that we uh, not um, place on our agenda any requests from uh, the, the uh, NSTAR or, or Verizon each year until we have heard a response to that inventory publicly at, at, a, at a meeting. 
unless otherwise overridden by a, a uh, vote of the board. Second. Well, I, I, there's too many problems with what you just said for me to thought that personally uh, at this point, but I love the concept of it. So what I'd rather do is if we're asking her to put together the policy, let's wait until we have her put together the policy okay. and then vote on it. Mm -hmm. I would draw my motion and, and just, just, well, I'm just, I, no, I, just, just make it to, to instruct and then to bring it back to us because okay. I think it's a very, and I'd love to use these first 20 as a test. Okay, okay. so what, how are we doing it? But, but it's quite a step to say they can't come before us and we won't approve anything unless those polls, are, or they've appeared public. You know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff in there we got to, I, I, I agree. We will the town council it. word it that we yeah. have yeah, the we, option we to? So I, I withdraw my motion and say I move to uh, request the town council assist in the drafting Fix of a it. policy <laughs> that reflects the discussion that has taken place here this evening. I need to get a caution on that move basically because again, I, earlier I mentioned that it's kind of like a state right for the utilities to be in the public way. And when, and the other reason we're coming in the public way usually is because somebody has asked for service. Right, a resident. We're required to provide service. We're providers of last resort. And then one of your constituents is gonna be delayed in either their home or their business. Yeah. And um, yeah. then how do you choose which person you're going to penalize in their project or their home in order to um, correct an issue, say, in another precinct of town? Right, okay, thank you. So I've, I guess I've generalized the motion and, right. and responded. Okay. To the, I'm, right. We're not against it. We just want to yep. do it in, in such a way that uh, we have the authority to do it. But uh, I love this. You know, let's let's do a tally of it. You know, uh, uh, once a year and right. Is, is that yeah. what was and we understand that Mr. Hurd had actually started a process li like this. It's just with, with time. I, th I think yeah. uh, it needs he to be. Was, he was like a dog on a sock and double poles for a while there. Yeah. I'll tell you so. All right, so moved and seconded further discussion. All those in favor, please signify by say, saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. And could you have that done by 5 o'clock tomorrow, please? Uh, no problem. No problem. Um, aye, no. aye, aye, aye. No. Probably even after town meeting, I would imagine, this year. But the 20, we should get work started on, I would think. I think so. so. Yeah. I think it would be good if we could report progress by town meeting. That would be a big deal. Okay. Yeah. Article 20. No action. Yeah. Oh, I, only if the, it says the proponents are recommending a vote of no action. On Article 20, transfer to Conservation Committee, town-owned parcels bordering Spy Pond, uh, the sponsor has asked us to vote uh, 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 unfavorable action as Mrs. Mahan has moved. Any discussion? Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed. Item number nine, final votes and comments. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Kelly. Final votes and comments. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair? Yes. Excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt. If I could just clar uh, clarify a couple of things on this. First of all, I apologize. Apparently, I had a collation error as well. What's in your books for Article 41 mm -hmm. uh, cuts off in the middle, but you've been provided with a full <laughs> set on your desks. Yeah. Yeah. A full set on your desk that's uh, highlighted agenda item number nine. Um, so this has actually uh, uh, everything, so you might just want to consider this rather than what's in your books. Okay. Um, but then on Article 21, if I could be heard on that for just one moment. Sure. Thank you. Um, the board's vote, uh, I think it was last week when it heard this article, uh, was to support the request, but o only for the life of the existing list. Um, and Mr. Dunn brought that up to me again, and I just wanted to make sure the board was comfortable with the language that's in um, this proposal. Or if you don't think it's clear enough, I can make it more clear. But the um, home rule legislation that I've drafted and provided to the board states that um, the candidate can be considered for appointment to the position of police officer when his name appears on the existing certification list. And he did represent to this board that he'd already taken the exam. I verified that. Um, that he has already taken the exam. So the only thing this legislation would allow him to do is to appear on the list that's currently in place. My understanding is that that list was um, issued in 2011 and expires at the end of this year. Okay. And I, I thought he understood that when we brought that up. He appeared to, yes. I just wanted to yeah. make sure that the board was comfortable with that drafting. Okay. 
Motion. Uh, I move approval. And I will say that I, I was the one who was concerned about the whether or not the language is clear enough. Now that's been explained to me, I'm totally satisfied. Second. I have a question, I, Julian. With by the time if this list ends this year, and by the time the legislation is actually passed, would could the legislation be too late for them to actually appear on it? These are usually passed in the summer. Uh -huh. um, the list is in place until December 31st. Okay, so what I've been told. Time. So if if there are appointments off that list, would be um, you, you would be eligible for any. Uh, the way it's written is that the legislation would take effect immediately on its passage, okay. <clears throat> not um, the usual 90-day waiting period. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm sure you know better than I do, but um, so that it, when it went into effect, um, the proponent could be considered. Now, if the board wanted to lengthen that, it could, or you know, if he were not appointed and wanted to come back for an additional consideration, he could move for that again. But I think it's it's been standard practice over the last few years to allow um, consider one consideration. Okay. No, I'm, I'm comfortable. I just wanted to make sure that if by the time, if there was, there was a chance that he might not even be able to make the list and then he went through this for, you know, nothing. But no, I'm comfortable with that. And your motion, Mr. Dunn, was on both 21 and 41? That was my intent. Is that appropriate? Yes, sir. Sure. And uh, I'm, who I'm, seconded? Second. Seconded. Further discussion? I'm sorry if I can be a bother. Okay. I just wanted to point out um, that uh, a, no a highlighted note to the board on uh, 41, which is the, the table that's being provided is a very preliminary table of easements. That is going to change before town meeting, so I just wanted to make clear that, that the board knew that. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and just so you we <coughs> often uh, vote final votes and comments all some together, so because uh, we've already had the hearings and Certainly, uh, it's been explained. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Okay. So now, item 10, discussion, town manager evaluation. Um, Adam said if he had a walk from Atlanta today, he would have just to be here for this discussion this evening. <laughs> late fall, even really, it was late summer, early fall, um, Adam, uh, if I'm remembering the dates right, but he asked us to uh, hold a couple of off-site meetings at which we discussed uh, goal setting with him. Uh, both we had our input and uh, he also uh, provided a lot of input on that. And part of what came out of that meeting is that we were to develop uh, an evaluation system for Adam. He'd like to establish a formal evaluation for his direct reports but felt that what he'd like to do is see kind of the board's approach to how we would evaluate him and, uh, uh, and then from here he'll, he'll develop his own. So Adam helped us, uh, so did uh, Karen Malloy, our Director of Human Resources, and they gathered examples for us, which uh, they gave to us, and then we together kind of came up with our recommendations and developed a document which was handed out, I believe, two weeks ago and it, that document was a combination of quantitative uh, responsive and qualitative responses. So uh, quantitative responses were from one to five, and qualitative, uh, anybody could make any comments that they wanted. This board directed me and uh, our director of human resources to get together after the five of us had all filled out that document. We took the five and we did, we. Uh, did the uh, statistics. I used to teach statistics at Emerson and I'm pretty sure these are all accurate. And then we also summarized the overall qualitative comments. So this board was directed to develop a summary document of which you have that in front of you now. So from here, first step is we need to make sure that each of you are satisfied with those summary comments and is there anything you would like to edit on those comments? We don't necessarily have to do that tonight, but at, uh, once you have approved the qualitative comments, the math is the math, right? But once you've approved the qualitative comments, then these, this summary evaluation would be made available, both uh, copies, if anybody would like it, in the selectman's office and also in uh, the uh, Human Resources Office. 
So um, there were uh, nine categories that we rated overall, and just this is now just a math score, because this wouldn't change based on anybody's input, because we've already all done the math. So on personal characteristics, and most of, most of these had three, four, five, or six sub points to it. We rated all of them one to five, uh, one being uh, never does anything, doesn't at all meet expectations, and five being consistently exceeds expectations. That wasn't the exact wording, but it was, mm -hmm. right, consistently exceeds, I think, was number five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, on personal characteristics, his average was 4.48. Professionalism, 4.35. Again, this can be made available if people want to see him. Public relations, communications, 4.5. Uh, su board support and relations, 4.56. Community leadership, 4.55. Organizational leadership, personnel management, 4.44. Financial management, 4.23. Planning and organization, 4.27. Overall evaluation, 4.6. So really A's across the board in my opinion, uh, but those, that's uh, taking together everybody's votes. Uh, in some cases, if someone put not applicable or they didn't rate it, we would only divide by four, obviously. So, so comments or I don't know whether you've all had enough time to read this and can approve it tonight or would rather wait until next week. Uh, if any of you would like to speak to me or Karen about any changes you'd like to make in any of the wording. Because that's qualitative, so that's not, you know, we tried to as best we could summarize uh, each of the comments on there. Now, also, all five evaluations are public record, so if anybody really would like to see each individual's uh, evaluation and comments, that also would be made available. But our responsibility was to come up with the summary evaluation. Did I go off track anywhere, Adam, in your, nope. anybody, any thought, Mr. Dunn? I'm comfortable with the <coughs> compendium that you put together. I think it, um, I, I, as far as I, I feel like my views are very well representative, represented by this okay. document. And Mr. I echo that sentiment and. Uh, Sounds good to me. Okay. So then how about a motion to approve and uh, we'll have, uh, uh, we'll direct uh, Karen to just finalize and make copies available. And, and so this now, after this approval, is officially presented to you, Adam, as well. Okay. Right. Okay. Can I make a general comment? Yeah. Uh, so uh, it's a kind of crack. I, I was a little bit amused when I read this report because uh, when I looked at the numbers, I could do the math and I could say this means that I was perhaps one of the harsher critics numerically of, of, the, t of the town manager. And um, I wanted to. I, I, I guess I wanted to give a verbal call or commentary, which is that I'm very happy with the job that Adam is doing, and I really think that the town has done well to hire him, and I really, um, I'm, despite evidently being one of his harshest critics, um, I'm delighted that he's here. But, well, thank you, I mean, the, but it all depends on how you look at a one through five scale. You know, yeah. three meets expectations, yep. you know. Uh, the lowest rating he got on anything was, was a three, so there were no below expectations, no never meets them or anything, I mean, uh, I would be proud to get this kind of an evaluation from a group of five uh, individuals with five pretty strong personalities who have strong opinions. But uh, uh, so anyhow, you know, it's, um, you know, I, I, I think it's a testament to Adam, but it, it, I'll tell you, it took me a lot longer to do it than I thought it would. You know, I, I must say that. Uh, it, was it four, how many pages? What, four pages, five yeah. pages? Yes. But we approved it before we, before we used it, so. Move approval. Move approval. A second, I do have second, a comment yep. too, though. Mr. Kilo. I, I just wanted to, you know, I echo Dan's sentiments. Um, it, I'm, I'm very happy, and I think it's, it's important to note, too, that even knowing that this is, you know, I, I dread my own performance reviews when I have to meet with my boss. But it's always, it's in, in a private office, it's between the two of us. And even knowing that this was very public, Adam was actually the biggest proponent to make sure that this got done and that we did this. Uh, and we do owe it to you. I think we owe it to any employee. But e even knowing that, um, it shows self-confidence and, and a comfort with, with uh, receiving uh, you know, the honest feedback from this board. 
and I think you've gotten it, and I think you should be proud. And uh, I think I, for, for one, I look forward to working with many more years. So, yeah. And suggestions were made too. It's not like <coughs> it was, uh, you know, everything's uh, perfect. Uh, one of the points one of you made. Uh, was that, you know, uh, when we look at Adam, we have to look at what he does day to day. But in truth, it's years from today we'll know how really effective he's been in terms of the work that he, he, has, uh, he has done for the town. So, you know, but uh, I, I thank you all. I think you took it very seriously. I think uh, you certainly spent a, a good deal of time on it. And, and uh, Karen and I, I'll tell you, it was a, it was a couple of meetings. Uh, I actually liked doing the math part of it, but uh, but trying to, you know, get that right touch in the comments to make sure that uh, we, we, we were fair to everybody. So on the motion by Mrs. Mahan to improve and present it officially to the town manager, um, all those, and as seconded by Mr. Curo, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, no, 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 you cannot speak, no. <laughs> I want to change no, no, suggestions for improvement in, in your <laughs> process. I, I want to thank the board for taking the time to go through the process. Uh, I think it's valuable for me. I think it's valuable for the board. I think it's valuable for the public to see the transparent process and know that together, you know, we're working on making sure checkpoints are met uh, and that, you know, there, there is a dialogue about how things are getting done and when they're getting done. So thank you for taking the time. I know it was, like you said, uh, Mr. Chair. Longer, a longer document than maybe some expected when they first picked it up, but I really do appreciate all of the, uh, uh, all of the feedback, so thank you. And you know, this was uh, once a year, and we'll, we'll redo this, and I, I assume, uh, under next year's chair, uh, and maybe we'll re, re, I don't know, if we need to redo the document or whatever, but all of us basically are dealing with Adam almost daily, and uh, if there's something we want done, he knows about it, if there's something that, uh, you know, so so we, we're doing our evaluation uh, all the way along anyhow, but uh, we're very lucky to have you, and I believe you're doing an excellent job, and I believe this backs that up, uh, and, uh, you know, don't get stuck in Atlanta again, pal. <laughs> that has to be category 10. Yeah. <laughs> well, let us all be there with you. Okay. Uh, do we need an executive session tonight, uh, mm -hmm. Madam Council? New business, Mrs. Kropelka. Well, I'll let you talk about the select homes. Okay. Seth. All righty. Nothing new, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have no new business. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. I have a few. Um, I'll be really brief. I'm going to work with the selectman's office with my colleague's approval at the March 18th um, meeting to have a proclamation for Autism Month in April. We've done this every year, um, as well as highlight that the police and fire guns and hoses uh, benefit Friday night, um, the 15th at 7 o'clock down at the Ed Burns Arena. Um, the proceeds go to autism research and support. So, um, and they've done that for several years now. So, it's, so I'll compile that and get it, and it should be a quick item. And then throughout the month of April, or maybe at the beginning, I'll highlight two or three things, going blue again and stuff like that, that the credentials and everything goes on. Um, I do want to say thank you to um, the Deputy Town Manager, Acting Town Manager, for getting us the memo from the Arlington Catholic practice field. It answered all my questions but one, and if I could just ask the town yeah. manager to, um, I don't, I mean, I know Dan Shine, but I've stopped from bringing this up because when we're at sporting events, I think it's unfair. Um, the resident um, that abuts the practice field now, um, originally there were a lot of trees there that sort of buffered him from the old practice field in um, Summer Street, Bob Baterio. He had asked if we could ask them, we know we can't require them. Um, if they could somehow plant some vegetation, knowing that it, it will take years down the road. Um, because Which house is Because the housing authority owns the house there now. No, no, he lives on the corner of Russell and, oh, I've been in his backyard and you literally can like yell over to Summer oh, Street. Sorry, and geez. I don't know if you've ever been in Bob's backyard, but it definitely has changed, you know. And I know we can't require them, but could we ask him maybe to point, plant three or four, some whatever. So when I, uh, when I met with the principal of Arlington Catholic, he said there is still some landscaping to be done okay. in terms of planting some vegetation. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he also told me that the, the neighbors uh, were all very happy with the project. So it didn't appear as though there was... He's the only one. He, I'll get you his number, yeah. 
touch with me. Yeah, definitely, like definitely, because I was over at his house a couple times, and he, it, he definitely was saying, can you get me some relief? Um, I spoke about, at the appropriate time, having the snow and ice meeting, um, and I'll leave that there. I do want to say that um, to people out there who forward emails or remarks or correspondence, not, not just bad, but also good. I got quite a no number of emails praising DPW of s several storms. I also pass on why couldn't you do this better. Um, Dan Warren and Jimmy Dodge informed me that they do print them all out, and at an appropriate time, they pass them out and p pin them on the board. And the d workers, d employees down at DPW really do appreciate that. And they said it really gives them a boost. They, they want to hear when they, they can do things better, but they do appreciate that. Um, I would just ask the town manager when he thinks it's appropriate, um, and that falls into my second thing, Arlington High School will be hosting the league competition in the fall for cheerleading. Um, I've had some conversations with Rob DiLoretto uh, in terms of purchases we'll have to make, but I've been in three leagues now, Greater Boston, Dual County, and Middlesex, and I've yet to find a high school that I can say, oh, Arlington's can beat that in terms of aesthetics. So I don't know, I know uh, permanent town buildings discussing you know five ten years down the road but if there's something especially where we're hosting at least that i'm sure there's going to be some other sports because eight has come up Wubin was the last one um that that would be appreciated and like i said i'm also speaking to rob de loretto who's doing a fabulous job and then the last thing would be and if you get us a report when it's appropriate from permanent town building sort of when they plan on discussing arlington high school and, and Mr. Carroll may be able to help that too, in terms of when they expect it to go into the capital plan. And then the last thing is, and I, the manager can correct me if I'm wrong, I was speaking to Linda Hansen on Sunday and she brought up about the comparative pay evaluation, that's what I'm calling it, I'm sure it's not. And um, I think what she indicated to me was that it went out to bid, only one uh, group supplied an RFP, so she was told that you know we need at least three and I think it went out to bid a second time, but I think the rule is if you go out a second time and you still don't get three, you get to move forward. And I believe she told me that she had a conversation with you or, or was going to have continuing conversations with you and the unions about reporting something to town meeting this year. Is that right? Or so I, I, And I, if I misspoke, that's my not remembering correctly. What I'll say is I, I owe the board an update on, uh, on the salary study working groups. There has been a consultant hired. Oh, he has been hired. hired. Okay. Collecting the data. Um, I guess I was never familiar with there being any report to town meeting, uh, but a, rather a report to the board and finance committee, and then the information will be public. Whatever. Uh, but that information over the next couple months will start to be gathered. That salary study group will be brought back together, meet with the consultant, um, and then the information will be gathered and shared. So that should come together in the next two months. That's fine. Because I was told we started this process like possibly a year ago, and I'd like to. But that's all my new business. Thank you, and I apologize. Mr. Byrne. No new business. Mr. Kiro. Uh, yes, just a few things. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I just wanted to congratulate the um, Friends of the Robbins Library and, and the Arlington Garden Club on their Books and Bloom event, which they held the other night. Um, you know, a lot of us, we go into the library and, and we're going in to do our business, and we don't get a chance to really stop and enjoy the building and take it in, and this was such a great opportunity to do that. Um, there must have been about 15 local authors who are there also who were set up and the opportunities to uh, speak with them as well as some great floral arrangements from the Garden Club members and local businesses as well. Um, it was really well done to support our libraries. And while, while I'm on that, I should note um, we'd hope to have an update. Uh, I'd been speaking to Mr. L Livergood, uh, um, and he had talked about coming in to update us on the library card challenge. As most people probably know, we unfortunately at the 11th hour were edged out by uh, Belmont and, and uh, Somerville. Somerville. However, I believe our, our um, registrations for last month were over twice as much as what they were last year. 135%. So it was really um, ex an extraordinary um, effort. I know I made a promise, and I always keep a promise. We have some logistical difficulties because I don't fit into the Clifford suit. At least I don't right now. So just when you least expect it. <laughs> um, I wanted to note that uh, the Patriots Day Parade. What's that? <laughs> nice day. Whoa! Thank now he's your friend, Mr. Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
No, I was, I was, I was upset with him for putting me in this corner. Now you are on my list too. Um, I want to note also the Arlington um, Education Foundation on March 24th has their annual trivia. Be it's their one of their major fundraisers, and um, they did put out a call for teams. We have a joint selectman and town manager team. So Mr. Byrne, myself, and uh, Mr. Chapdelaine will be competing there under the team name of Boys to Monotomy, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, they knew the music. I didn't, so that's. So wish us well. There are a lot of good folks who were uh, who were uh, there. Um, last week, uh, Secretary Davey from the Mass Department of Transportation was in Arlington for a, uh, a legislative briefing down at District Four. Ms. Chapdelaine, myself, our entire legislative delegation were there. It was nice timing because I think we each had a chance to kind of directly reinforce the message that was sent to Mass uh, DOT after the, um, the the big the public meeting we had on the Mass Ave corridor project. Um, we got to hear about uh, you know the governor's proposals around revitalizing transportation. Unfortunately, as we all know, the very next day the uh, speaker came out saying he's not going to isn't looking to. Uh, <clears throat> play along quite quite uh, the way the governor had hoped so we'll, we, we should all be uh, paying attention t to that there's a lot of uh, chapter 90 uh, funding that that's at stake um, as well as other projects and lastly I just note um, I, I think um, Ms. Sullivan had uh, forwarded uh, to the board an email I received regarding the uh, silver maple forest asking for this board to um, write a letter to the Belmont Conservation Commission uh, uh, thanking them for their continued vigilance uh, around this the the, uh, the project and trying to protect not only Belmont but also the abutting areas of Arlington from the potential flooding of impacts and such um, I don't know if that's something that the board is, is interested in, in taking up at this point um, and I'm well, willing we to put a motion past McClurse, if I may I'm sorry we have submitted a letter um, in support the combined board of selectmen um, on that if you want I can archive what I have saved in Ms. Rowe and get that to the selectmen. I wonder if perhaps we could just bring that back just so we have it on the agenda. Yeah, and then and everybody such. can look we at it and decide. That. If it's oh. I did call Corey Beckwith today after I got your email. Yeah. She's not here, but she'll call me tomorrow because I think Diane, refresh my memory, I think Larissa might have said something last year as chair. Mm -hmm. And I did find a letter from, uh, I think it was May 2012. Yeah. That was regarding the flooding. Right. The upper was um, that Kevin sent. Mm -hmm. Yes, out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'll get back to you tomorrow, Joe. We have uh, a letter. And of course, we could sign something together. Yeah. Have the whole board sign. Yeah, if there's some general yes. consensus, yes. maybe yes. we yes. should yes. bring yeah. bring forward something the next. We've always endorsed their Silver Maple Forest, and the Belmont Board of Selectmen yeah. have done our Mugar stance. So yeah, it's sort yeah. of been a collegial thing. Yeah. So maybe I can, maybe you and I can yeah. work on this with with uh, Marie and bring something forward to the board the next time. Okay, which is a week from tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two items tonight. I'll um, start with the bad news, then go with the good news. Um, in our packet, we have um, a letter from the federal government that says what we expected was going to happen, which is the sequester um, of the funds being done at the federal level directly impacts our CDBG grant, and our so our community development block grant has been reduced by five percent for this year. So. Uh, I can't say that we're surprised by this, but it's um, you know it's a it's a, it's a problem, and it, we, I mean we're going to have to manage that uh, through the CDBG fund. I will also say that uh, so the CDBG subcommittee had its first meeting two three weeks ago or something like that, and we sat there and we went through the list of programs and we each like kind of took a shot at like defining the one that we think should be reduced and then was argued out of it by everybody else at the board. <laughs> and because it, it's one of those things where it isn't even just a matter you're deciding like, you know, who, get, who doesn't get increased. You, I mean, th there need to be cuts and, and the, we've chosen all these programs because we think they're all worthy programs. And so one of the things that I'm really intent on is as the federal government's funding for this um, is reduced, one of the things that's kind of natural is that the town starts taking that on. But that doesn't really scale either because for the town to do it, we have to increase, for us to provide more services, we need to increase our taxes more. And so one of the things that I'm really trying to figure out is identifying specific programs on that list and finding 
the private solution that we can get in order to donate to some of these. And so um, at the meeting, both Adam and Steve and I took on specific groups that we are connected with or have knowledge of that we think we could persuade perhaps to take a program off the book of the CDBG and hand it off to the private foundation. So I guess I would encourage the board to think about, A, when we're, I mean, we're going to take a vote on the CDBG funds at a future date. It's going to be unpleasant and it's going to be very difficult. And insofar as that we can identify private funds to hand some of these programs off, so we can sit there and say, you know, look, this program is still going to continue. It's just happening on a, you know, essentially we're doing a handoff from a federal government to private. I think uh, we should all think about that pretty aggressively. Mm -hmm. All right, that was my bad news. Um, my good news is that today I had a fascinating meeting. Uh, Annie LaCourt can put together a team, uh, um, Involution Studios, which is directly across the street, and uh, a pro Seeing the Truth, Graphic Insights into Arlington Budget for Everyday Citizens. They're interested in helping create a interactive online representation of the budget that you can kind of drill into and you can see like where the rep budget money goes and where the money comes from and stuff like that. Uh, Alan Jones from the Finance Committee, Kersey, Allison Ampey from the School Committee, myself and Andrew Flanagan were there, plus three people from uh, Involution. And it was the, by far my most fascinating meeting today. And our goal... <laughs> <laughs> I have so many I mean, things I could say. <laughs> <laughs> other, than other than this one, Mr. Greeley. Uh, <laughs> it was my most interesting meeting before 11 o'clock today. Um, <laughs> I'm still not going to say what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, fingers crossed we might have like a first draft of something available for uh, town meetings when we come around to budget time. And it may not be that we can do this year's budget, but we may be like retroactively looking at last year's budget. But it's one of those things that uh, it, it has it's one of those it has potential to be really exciting, and um, it's being you know it's a gift from the co company across the street. So I'm very excited about it. Wow. Yeah. Will they bring it here to show us, or will we? We would definitely. I I think. We'll see, let's see how it goes. Like, I mean, this, I'm, do, I'm doing something a little dangerous and I'm talking about it before we even really started working on it. We just had a kickoff meeting. <laughs> yeah. And so who knows, in eight weeks I'll be like, what? I don't remember anything about that. But uh, yeah. hopefully it, I I'm, we'll be able to publicize it before town meeting. Uh, see where, uh, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, I shouldn't say before town meeting, excuse me. Before we get to the budget section of town meeting. Like, I, I think we'll, town meeting will have started. It's just that the budgets are generally later on. That's it. That's it. Uh, two quick ones. One is uh, this Saturday, the um, I got an invitation for an open house at the Old Schwan Mill. Oh yeah, yeah. But I can't make it, so I didn't know whether or not the rest of my but we did talk one night here about maybe us as a board going there for a tour. But I don't know if the rest of you uh, will be able to go on Saturday or not. Anyhow, but uh, uh, that is something I would like to uh, like to explore at another point. But part of the reason I can't be there on Saturday is because the Selectones had a gig at 1 o'clock at the Senior Center for the uh, Senior Association, but I also have a couple other meetings after that, so that's why I, I think the Swarm Hill is like 1 to 5 or something on Saturday afternoon, so. Yeah, but something to 4. I, uh, to for four. me, traditionally, yeah. Saturday events, just because of my family circumstances, I can't, I can't make the Selectones. Or, I mean, I used to be able to make the Selectones for St. Patrick's Day on Saturday, so I apologize. No, but I'd love to do a group tour if we can do a different day or if we just go individually, but I unfortunately can't do Saturday. They're actually offering for, um, for kids, they're offering, actually kids and adults, a, a mapping workshop that I'm, in the morning that day that I'm doing with, with my kids. So I'll be there right before. Mm -hmm. I, I will make the Selectones, though. Yeah. But, my kids uh, don't know they're singing yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Joe... It, maybe talk to them about the board would like, you know, maybe yeah. if we just did it before a meeting one night, if we mm -hmm. reach yeah. out there like yeah. 5.30 or 6. Yeah. Yeah. And, That'd be uh, neat. It'd be easier. Just did that and then, you know, you we mean? come on here to the meeting. Or, you know, uh, we at one point held meetings around town. So we held one at the Public Works. We held one at, at uh, Community Safety. We held one at the Central Fire Station. We moved the meetings around town at one point. Mm -hmm. Cable wasn't thrilled with that. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Uh, Okay, so uh, anything else? Move to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed. Good night.